the forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. I think we're on episode 57? 57 or something like that. I think we were on this last time too. We're like 57. Yes, it's 57. Yeah, 57. All right, Mike with the catalog. Oh. With my Mike with the catalog. My dates and times and episode numbers. That's right. You know, I'm gonna write it in my book that so 12, it, we're on 57. 12, 12, yeah, 12. Mike is actually he ca- he's, he's logging his 10. experience. Practically from the original. Wow. He's logging his reward points by date. Yep. I've never seen players do that up until this last year. And Ben does it and you do it. And then I'm like, what because you got experience a Nazis did you grow up with? If you miss one, then you know. That's right. Yeah, it's just Maybe one of those not. like, well, do we have this? And I go, I have exactly what we have. That's right, we always know. <laughs> so let's let's um let's jump right in. Tim's back. Hey Tim. You saw hey, Tim. him throwing throwing the jab well. horns earlier. He's back, so we had a full table he tonight, like which is great. I know. I always eat high chews. High chews, please sponsor us. High chews, we accept sponsorships, <laughs> as, as along with bubbly water. High chews, the Japanese toffee you'll love. <laughs> You're trying for that. <laughs> we just need to send it to him. Oh, Meeting Al, please sponsor us yeah. too. We need another meeting you know out for Yeti? the other record studio. I'm, I'm down for Yeti, too. Yeah, Yeti. Look, we use one for a stand and one for an actual right, one. we do. That's, that's, how, that's how hardcore we are. <laughs> um, so we're playing Queen of Embers, and uh, we left off on an interesting note last time. <laughs> so maybe we should just talk about <laughs> what happened last game session. Yeah, that would be helpful for me. Yeah. What happened last game session? <laughs> <laughs> well... Uh, well, we started on the boat. <coughs> you did start on the boat, yes. We had a bit of a discussion about what the next plan was, which was to go back into the city to retrieve, um, to f- try and find Father Bartlesby and Jonah Sparrow. And uh, Jonah was primary. Pri- he was the primary. This yeah. is a deal. Jonah Sparrow. <laughs> so, who's his bar- Who's his father? Whatever his name. Father Father Bartlesby. What well, we know about Father Bartlesby? That's more new than I think. He was a friend of Jonah's. Yeah, he, he was said, the. That's where I'll if go. Jonah didn't come back, that's where he was headed. We found that in uh, Jonah's journal. Uh huh. Right. Okay. That was, uh-huh. that, was, that was that was last week. And you, you confirmed there. that. That was well. the last page of the journal. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. What um, else happened in that game session? <laughs> There were some questions asked. Of who? Uh, the uh, squire that we took yep. prisoner? Yeah, squire we, Silas Garka, I remember you took him. Yeah, he yeah. Uh, took him hostage. He did yeah, real well with us, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we, didn't, we didn't lead him astray at all. We had some questions for him, like if he knew where Jonah was. They didn't, which is why they were at the boat. Um, what happened to Booker? They said that they, uh, they got him and he was to be, uh, was it? Executed? Executed with uh, what, guillotine. Auto guillotine. Auto guillotine. Um, and and guillotine. at like an hour. Guillotine. So we had like an hour. To, or it was like two hours when we got him. Yeah. Um, we'll get to that. <laughs> we will. Uh, we, we were trying to figure out where Father Father Bartlesby would be. And the, the best leads we really had to go off of was the archivist library or the lyceum. So we asked what did you guys do with that as both of those are book storing locations uh to which we found out the archivist library has been untouched thankfully uh and the lyceum is being used to hold court to try heretics apparently the archivist that would be her- that would be heresy in their own self if they burned their own <laughs> yeah no one said right? they were alarmed. <laughs> um oh. we also asked him what the patrols were like along the shore uh he told us we could go jump in the lake that's a nice way 
Um, so did we throw him in the lake? Oh yeah. Uh, we'll get yeah. Him. Uh, we'll get yes. <laughs> I knew I could depend the on you. Answer well, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the quick and painless answer is yes. Yes. Uh, the uh, quick and not so painless we, answer we, was we, us. Yeah, there was some insightful. Uh, I see ways what of you did there. That, that information, yeah. Um, well, I'm, maybe a miss half of it, depending on which side of me you're standing. He really gouged that. Um, I did gouge that. He was lacking perception. He okay. really was. Uh, There's no depth to that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so Elise and Eugene decided to go into the bottom of the boat to have a conversation with this guy, uh, and he was not too polite about it, nor forthcoming with information. Right. So we gouged out his eye, and. Uh. Then, uh, yeah, that's how Dan reacted too. Yeah. And who gouged out whose eye? Uh, it just it escalated real quick. You, you did? Yeah. You gouged out an eye? Yeah. And you then they fail the interrogation <laughs> test. Yep. And uh, then we pull the veil over the situation. And yeah. It might have gone a little further. Then heroin comes down to see the mess we made. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the mess we made. He's okay. he's extreme, he's extremely disappointed. Um, <laughs> but uh, I get disappointed my dad. Yeah, yeah. But, but you so. cleaned it up by pushing him over the edge. Yeah, yeah. so he went in the water. <laughs> End um, result. In the, armor. The key takeaway is armor. they learned no, no, nothing we, we, else from their interrogations. Yeah. We, tur- we took that armor off. Uh, yeah. So he could swim? No, he was dead. Oh. Oh, he was, yeah, no. We, no, he was dead. No. Oh, yeah, we, so we just glossed well, like, Yeah, him. yeah, because it, it was starting to get real... <laughs> real real Dicey? dark. Not yeah, grim yeah. dark anymore, just dark yeah, dark. Yeah, just... Yeah, We were going to beat him to death with books. That was the plan. You know. Who was but, the other but, person involved in the interrogation? Oh, <laughs> oh okay. Yeah. Uh, um, when so, did you become the dark yeah, So guess how much corruption high. Eugene ended up at the end of the game session. No, yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> it's not over. No, no. 20. We'll get there. Um, so we went. <laughs> yeah, it's like that scene in The Price is Right. When you're, <laughs> uh, so we decided to dinghy across the river. Because taking the big boat was not possible without ending up at a dock full of cultists. Uh, arrived in the city uh, to head towards the Archivist Library and the Lyceum because they're across the street from each other, which is real convenient for us. I like that. Um, <coughs> we head straight in, passing through burning buildings and city and wreckage, and there's a strange absence of people, and smoke is raining down with ash all over the town. Real great scene. Um, and then, uh, we get to right outside the two buildings and they've got nine guillotines connected by this motorish contraption for the auto guillotine and it's getting ready to go down and then, uh, and then the bell starts going off and we see the mechanic working on the engine portion. Uh, and so Tyrwin says, uh, we're going to go now while we've got some sound cover. Yeah. And it was a great scene, real thrilling, where we raced <laughs> the bells to finish. Uh, and Eugene made it first, so I just went straight through the back of the neck and killed the dude. Um, oh, like the guy who was about to pull the guillotine thing? Uh, was working on the guillotine. The mechanic. Guillotine. Yeah. 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 Uh, you say we were saved by the bell. You were. We were saved yeah. by the bell. So they, did, so they did a chase scene. Yeah. Yeah, they did a chase scene against the ringing of the bells because it was eleven thirty. Because mm-hmm. they know that the, the execution is going to take place at twelve, so we did a chase scene toward it yeah. uh, to catch the person who was working on the mechanics of a auto guillotine of nine guillotines connected by strange machinery. So it killed really, the mechanic. How fast a guillotine is? How much faster you need to? <laughs> Well, they had like thirty people that want to do. No, no, it, it, was, no, it was only nine. Yeah, it was nine at a time, and then they they. Raise themselves up and yeah, it was like you just but, uh, put them in, take yeah. And so even if the mechanic um, was not the one thing that they needed, we also loaded the engine with nine bottles of lamp oil to burn it out. Yeah, very so, ingenious on the nine uh, bottles. Yeah, we clutch rolled that one, figured out how to stop it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so we killed this guy. Tyrone picks him up. We hustle into the archivist. Oh library. yeah, you dragged the corpse with us. I forgot. You're dragging. He, no, he, he carried, he carried, he carried it. it like a baby. <laughs> I thought it was like a fireman. Uh, yeah, was in my head, it was like Lion King. Uh, <laughs> so, and so the blood would get on me rather exactly. than the ground. <laughs> That's great. Um, so we went into the archivist library. It was all spooky dark. We dumped the body at the entrance, then headed down into it, where we found Father. Father Bartlesby, I've been messing up all that session too. Father <laughs> Bartlesby uh, and his nightly companion, uh, whose name escapes me, 
Um, uh, 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 Guillaume? Guillaume, Sir Guillaume. The second. Um, really? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> really. Okay. Uh, and they said they had Jonah there, but we did not actually see Jonah. Like, we didn't stop to talk to him. Because we didn't have time. Because the father was like, you got to stop this madness going on across the city, across the courtyard. Uh, and then we found out that there's a secret tunnel between the Lyceum and the Archivist Library that we're going to take. And the current game plan is we're going to sneak up there and kidnap, or maybe it was unclear kill. Uh, <laughs> Definitely not kill. Well, they, they the father was against violence in the Lyceum, but Sir Gion said, let's not be naive. It could easily come to blows. So... Keep your wits and weapons about you, um, and don't be stupid. And we're going to go over there and kidnap, uh, I want to say Hierarch, but it's definitely not that. It's uh, Inquisitor Evangeline. Yeah. We're going to kidnap her. What else did Barsby say about Inquisitor Evangeline? She is sent the, by God. Yeah. She, hears by the God. Vo- she hears the voice of God in her head. So she's crazy. Bitch be crazy. So Warren heard that and was like, Voice of God, huh? She hears voices in her head, huh? A kindred spirit. <laughs> I definitely don't want to kill her. I need to talk to her. Are you going to take her as a mentor and go train on a mountain? <laughs> <laughs> so, are you going to hand her like your sword? The good angel, kill? bad angel is kill? sitting on on <laughs> Terwin's shoulder, and he must make an important decision. And bad angel went out on that one. Yeah. Oh, so we snuck across. That wasn't the end. That's just where we're pretty much at. We snuck across, went through the secret tunnel, proceeded up the stairs. Eugene and Elisa. They merged through. Eugene and Elisa Elisa felt we were real stealthy, and then right as we hit the top of the stairs, uh, Evangeline turns around and is like, "Uh, not so much. (laughs) So we're going to slightly rewind things to when you first emerge from the waterfall inside the temple. Was this like in that scene in Scott Pilgrim where he talks to himself and he gets the extra life? That's right. Great. Because we're going to need it. <laughs> I already spent two extra lives, man. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Got three. I'm going to die. Sorry, I've got beef. I cheated on you. You got beef, let's eat. Maybe she's real friendly. You emerge from beneath this waterfall inside the church, coming through this very narrow vaulted hallway as you step into this kind of this uh, knee-deep pool of water that is clearly this door was hidden behind the waterfall or the water wall inside the temple. You can hear the echoes of this of the woman preaching to a large group of people. You can't see them. You're kind of in this lower antechamber, and it's covered in shadow. There's no light down here, save for your own if you brought it. And her voice echoes off the stone and the flying buttresses inside this place that arch toward the ceiling. And you can see kind of around this distant corner up this set of stairs, all of this, the glow of all of these these candles. You can hear the sound and murmur of others inside here as well. Alright. Ready to go up there and take a look-see? As ready as I'll ever be. Is anyone really ready for this? You never know. Maybe she'll uh, we'll just have a cup of tea and everything will work out. I'm ready to die every day. I don't know about you. Not particularly. <clears throat> to, to, and I must say, for the short amount of time I've known you, you are truly inspirational with your words at the last moment. You know that, right? Uh, the boss the... doesn't believe in inspiration. He just believes in putting the pointy end into it. Oh. I'm only going to leave this world when the gods deem it, not when some person deems it. Again, poignant. Well, 
Just saying, she's got the voice of a god, apparently. Maybe she's the one that deems it. No. She's just like you and me. You can take comfort in that. No. Because you look like crap. I feel worse. Thank you. So, All right, well, what's the plan? So what's the plan, yeah. Oh, we agree with the... Bob and I rarely ever agree, but I agree. We need to get eyes up there. Well, I got garbage for eyes. I see a lot. I know there's some time to time I can go. I'm very good at that also, as you guys know. Uh, but what's the plan after that? Things We're come killing this things crazy come to, person? If things come to blows, we shouldn't kill her. She may have some important information. The key to winning any sort of battle, one is to make it to where it's a last resort. Two, reconnaissance. Can't do anything if you don't know what, what you're getting yourself into. That's why I want eyes. Well, then we go forward and we look. It is a good point that we might want to know our next step. Uh, Not so, that we have much time. So since we've kind of rewound, <coughs> like yes, it's it's okay to make different decisions. Absolutely. Different yeah. I didn't want to. Choose know, your yep. adventure. Yeah. Okay. Um, Back to the page. Scott that was Pilgrim, fast. So we, Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. So we hear her. Preaching. Oh, you can hear and the so, preaching. Absolutely. So, yeah, something I should have realized last time. But anyways. Um, I didn't have the sound queued up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she's she's preaching right now. And so that means that there's a whole congregation up there. So, oh, by the way, I'm whispering, but I'm going to speak a little louder. Yeah. Uh, there's a whole congregation up there. So that means that uh, maybe we should wait until... She's done speaking before we go up there. Maybe there's a moment to nab her while everybody's going outside to start auto guillotining. I much doubt it. If you think about it, think about what happened with the prophet. The, the second he was done with his proselytizing or whatever, he was all of a sudden enveloped by a crowd. Because yeah, he is their, their prophet. He is their beacon. I mean... She's not going to be let go. She's not going to be alone at any point. I mean, right. I mean, if we're going to kidnap this person, it's not like we have time to, like, ask questions. There's going to be a whole congregation there that's going to be, well, upon us. And is our plan to take her back the way we came? Well, she thinks Or we're just going to throw her out a window? I was thinking the plan would be knife to throat old enough that way if anybody makes a move you know it's, it's, it's an hostage situation rather than just taking who, who, who is wielding said knife to throat and what is everyone else doing well I mean I could do it but uh, they'll notice me going up there oh so you want us to sneak up there nab her yeah is and then bring her back down without getting anybody else involved well, no, we want to get to the point where we're grabbing without anyone noticing. And then if they notice when we grab it, that's probably even preferential because then we'll stop the execution. You hear this clapping and this voice is going to gather as the den dies down once again and she resumes her proselytizing. Like they, they need to see that we have a... That's how we're going to stop these executions. I mean, maybe there's a nicely placed chandelier we could drop on her head. Well, perhaps on the crowd. Would I know a generalized layout of the building up top? Like, if there's <laughs> chandeliers or barriers or something we might be able to, like, throw in place of any mob coming after us? You were never elevated to logician, so you've never been inside here. You've only been in the archivist library. Gotcha. Well, I have one thing. This place has a lot of books. There's quite a bit of candles. We're not taking that route. Tell me a better option. A distraction would be the best way. I'm all for distraction, but the distraction we had was outside with the whole auto-guillotine business. 
That's supposed to give us some time to do something, but we're not burning down the library. We may all die and move on, but the knowledge held here in this library is more sacred than any of our lives. No uh, offense. I don't believe that, but I don't think you've met me well enough yet. I don't know about you, but I hold your life more valuable. I've given it's up to you, boss. Office. We can go up there. I mean, Elise uh, and I have done this type of work before for you, so we can go up there and put... Because. Realistically, if it's packed full of crazies, we're not going to get near this woman. Well, Unless without, you just want us to look. <clears throat> without your swords. Okay, without knowing any further knowledge, that's my plan. Look. If you want, if you, well, to look, and if you have, an, <coughs> if you have an opening, make sure you, you get her helpless. That way, we control it. Because I'm pretty sure they're not going to come charging at us if we're going to kill her. Now, are we? If we what, if, what if we all charge her at once? At least half of us will die. That um, is. I, I think stealth is a better idea. Alright. Right. Uh, unlike half of you, I don't I don't want to die here. Especially yeah. for... I mean, I like Jonah. Pretty much I think I'm the only one here who does like Jonah. Well... Mm. I forgot Warren and I drink with him all. Oh, I like Jonah. Wait, well, all right. Uh, it's the whole reason we came back here. Well, I mean, sure. But I, I'm not going to die for the man. No. Well, well, let's go take a look. This is not for Jonah at this point. Uh, this is for everyone here. I'll stay down here. Things go bad. Uh, see you on the other side. Remember. We roll first for... For only thing. Let's go take a look. Yeah, see what yeah. we can see. See the layout, the scope of things. Maybe the answer's right there, and all we have to do is look at it first. Let us go. Will you sneak up the stairs then? Yes. Is there an alternate route? No. At least Spanish and I some, should go up. This appears to be some sort of like small reflectory area where you're kind of knee deep in water. Like some people would come here and they burn candles on the edge of the water. You can see there are a pair of statues, one with an open book, one with an open book raising his hand to the sky, the other with a closed book pointing down as, as if to teach. They are ancient They are ancient statues of... Is it of straight people. up, or is it broke? Is it a broke staircase? How's the No, the, stair, the stairwell seems to kind of, kind of go up about two or three steps, and then it winds around to the back of the building inside. Uh, You're all inside at this point. I think eyes, eyes is the best option... You don't want to be seen, and the best time to try anything is when the congregation breaks. That is the time that they're paying the least attention to what's up front, because they're looking to get their things or looking to take the prisoners out or something like that. And we wait till she's done. Can we gauge how far away she is based on how loud her voice is? Uh, you can make an eavesdrop test. This test will be secret. Okay. Can I assist in that? You can make your own. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, all right. My ability is 49, and I rolled a 76. 52, I rolled a 24. One second. Hold on. Time out. My ability is 49, I rolled a 76. You want to keep that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 52, and I've got shaken, not stirred, uh, and I have a 24. You want to keep it or re-roll? I'm going to stick with a 24. I got a 19 out of 56. Okay. And I'll keep it. You all would gauge maybe... Twelve yards? Up the stairs and around the corner? She's right here. Drag her off the podium, throw her down the stairs. I mean, she breaks a couple bones, but we can still drag her, right? You must be behind the pulpit. You, you would right judge. Behind. Yeah, so let's get eyes on it. So she's going to be coming down this way. Yes. Well, that was the intent. So we'll go back through the passage. I will leave that door open. I don't know. No, if no, 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 no. There's no door. No door <coughs> there. It's just an open, small vaulted hallway. Gotcha. And oh. behind the water, the interior waterfall. Okay. So 
So she has to come down these stairs to go out, though, right? Mm -hmm. No, No. she might be able to step forward. Ah, ah. You would guess that she's giving, she's that she is preaching in front of the congregation, and they will emerge from the front of the Lyceum. But this is not a this is not a temple in a traditional sense. Even down here, you can see that there are large bookcases filled with volumes that have been uh, been well worn and handled. There are little stone benches down here. All would sit on and read books beneath uh, beneath lantern light. Okay. Last thing. You know, them Templars was telling them zealots what to do, and them zealots was listening. See if you can keep her from talking and shouting orders. Okay. Okay. Cover her mouth. Are you going to wait for the sermon to end, or are you going to sneak up there while she's giving the sermon? I want to sneak up there while she's giving the sermon, so I can always take a look at stuff. Okay. And with this, Eugene begins to slowly pad forward. I'm going to look at Bannister. Oh, yes. I'm like, pop my head towards the stairs. Bannister. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Banneker. Or sorry, Banneker. Sorry. It's all right. Mike's Did I get you a Bannister already? He got yeah. a Bannister. <laughs> yes. All right. Bannister so, ball. Eugene, yeah. hold on. Eugene begins to sneak up slowly on his own. God. I forgot this. What? Oh. At least what? I would, too. I guess I'm going to follow them. Okay, the three of you begin to sneak up. Roll a secret stealth test. I rolled a nine last time. Uh, so well. I know. I'm going to roll like a 99. You're right. I'm going to roll that. Nine. 96. What would you roll? 96. <laughs> so I have a 90. I got a 54, and I have a 96% chance. Standard Lord, you're secret. Treat it as standard. Not ninety six. You don't have ninety six. Yeah, I do. I have uh, um, what's uh, streetwise. Oh yeah, urban environment. That's right. So what's your what is your stealth without 80, that? Oh, so eighty six. Sorry. Okay. And you rolled a fifty four. Yes. You want to keep that? Yeah, that's thirty percent. Okay. Uh, you can spend money for me too. Oh good. Okay. So Eugene, I'm gonna reroll mine. Yeah, we're both re-rolling. I think those two missed. Oh, uh, okay. 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 So, Eugene, what'd you get? Uh, my percent chance is a 49, and I got a 55. Critical nice. something. Yeah. Hey, Lisa? 45, and I got a 14. Can I keep that? Before he kills my character. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I have to. I re-rolled. <laughs> 96 and 14. I'm going to... They begin to sneak up. It's pretty good, right? You come up and around the corner, the three of you do, and what you're looking at is this large library where all the tables have been pushed to the side, and the books have been stacked as high as the eye can see. As you can see, they've been piled almost 12, 15 feet high, and up on top of that is this teetering pulpit in this woman holding this red fiery opal on her hand and raising her hand toward the sky and pointing toward this massive throng of dirty flagellants citizens and she is surrounded completely by by Templars armored head to toe this place must have at least 50 people inside of it you begin to slowly shrink back I'm gonna move back and then she turns upon heel with your critical failure. Uh, yeah. Air five. Her eyes five. lock toward yours. And the two of you are kind of like a slunk of the two, and, and I, I should say specifically, Banneker and um, Elisa have kind of like peeled away to the side. And you feel almost singled out as you kind of stand there caught unawares and her eyes lock with yours and she raises the opal in her hand she gesticulates toward you and says you are a sneak thief guilty or innocent she raises her fingers in the air and then begins to trace symbols with her pinky and thumb through it 
Guilty or innocent? Innocent. I have stolen. As he nothing. says this, a pillar of flame erupts beneath him. Boom! <laughs> incinerating him from all sides as he is almost he is set on fire. Thirty-one damage. Uh, I will spend a fate point. Okay. Boom! He goes up in flames, and he falls to the ground, rolling back and forth to save himself from burning. The entire throng begins to build into a crescendo. You can hear their voices raise as the whole Lyceum rings with their voices. She holds her hands in the air, and the entire congregation goes silent. She slowly begins to walk down the books, as if they were constructed of stairs. And the two of you are standing at the flank as you see this happen. The opal flashes for a moment, and she grasps it in her palm and places it back around her neck. Sneak thief. Guilty, she says. We will begin a social intrigue event now. So we're actually hidden, though. Yeah. So well, actually, let, let's take a, let's take a quick pause. Okay. So the que- the question is, what is going through Banneker and Elisa's minds at this point? Uh, we just sort of light the new guy on fire with her words. Uh, oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Yeah, that's, oh, pretty, fuck, that's oh, pretty. That's pretty, that's pretty much it. Yeah. That's a pretty close assumption. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, um, unless there's a way to, yeah, you know, knock her down the stairs. <laughs> Got them to stay hidden. To be clear, uh, I was at Lightly Wonder when I had to spend the fate point. I stay at that. You do, point. yes. That's what I thought. Well, you ignore that hit. Yeah. yeah. That was worth ignoring. I would have gone outright to Slane. Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's a good use to it. I'm yeah. pretty sure... 80% of the table. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd have been slain. So, you all see this huge pillar of flame erupt from the ground. And, and you see Eugene within just a flash of light stagger back and forth and fall to the ground as he is somehow still alive. His hair and eyebrows singed. Get her! <laughs> what? Uh, I'm, I'm in a panic. I'm just gonna draw the sword and and, and point at her quiver. Ter- Terran's gonna charge forward. And, well, move forward and try and put her in a chokehold to to pacify her. Okay. Oh, that was the plan. Oh, here, I uh, guess it is now. Yeah. Guess we're going there. It's just. I will need help removing this. Be delicate. Pull it all the way out first. And then we will pull it toward Nick. Oh, Nick. I know what you need to. Oh, man. Oh, oh, can I get the festy blanket on me? It is <laughs> revealed. Oh, boy. The entire congregation has gathered. And we will begin placing figures. How? Uh, you have figures. We do. Uh, I believe we said this is Terwin. This is Elisa. This is Banneker? Yeah, that's close enough. This is Warren. Is Warren. Get drunk, Warren. <laughs> this? Eugene. <coughs> Who is us? Eugene. Who? Eugene. Eugene. Oh, that's right. Boom. And this? I guess it's me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. As this begins to happen, 
her sermon picks up. We need to roll initiative. Let me give you your cards. We're all good. Banneker. Um, Elisa. Um, Lauren. Terwin. Eugene. Harper. You sure I'm going Sharpie? Uh, uh, should be in your. We uh, chat. There was only one. Uh, here we go. You can this. In this, in this entire chamber, you can see that the zealots have citizens held hostage, ready for, ready to be put through the auto guillotine, if you will. So, give me your cards, if you would. I definitely need one. Sure did. Look at all this. Andy, you first. I do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Definitely. Anybody else I'm missing? And I'm hidden, so I get a surprise round. Oh, I'm hidden too. Turn around the corner. Shoot her. We'll get to that in a moment. She may not get. Okay, so Banneker, uh, you go first uh, because you have Han shot first at your ability. Are they surprised? You, you, uh, well, you're hidden, so yes. Uh, you currently, you always go first, so keep this in mind. There are a large number of zealots in here. They outnumber you easily, three to one, by quick counts. And you can see that the church doors, although they are closed, you recall seeing people outside. So the plan is ludicrous. Mm -hmm. You will be rushing to your death. You hear Terran scream. Get it! Okay. How many uh, spaces am I from this this crazy person? Mm -hmm. You are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 12. You'd be engaged with her if you ran up the books. Or if you charged up the books. So if I charged... Charged choke? I, I, I want to drag her down the stairs, but I, I don't think it's possible. Well, she's on a stack of books. Right. Her pulpit is up on this massive, massive stack of books here. How massive is that stack of books? 12 feet high. Is there any way to knock over the... No, oh, there are hundreds and hundreds of books. They're arranged in these loose set of stairs. She's holding congregation over this massive pile of books that have been carefully stacked. Knocking them over would be impossible. At least from here. We're not supposed to burn the books. Yeah, if someone doesn't want us to burn Or the draw books. blood. Hey, right, and hey. Right. So the bloody cit citizens that we're seeing, that's not I think Father what's his name? At this the, point, none of the citizens have been molested. They're simply held in bonds. Yeah, and 
Use your best judgment. So, so we've seen these people beating and thrashing people all through the city, but none of these people are molested? Apparently not. Yeah. It seem odd, but, you know. Just remember, I can't see what's going on up there. Yeah, Taryn has no visibility of yeah, what's so happening Taryn up top. Yeah, Taryn saying something that he's, he's clueless about the situation. That's right. So if we were to position, basically, Banneker is here, and Eva Inquisitor Evangeline is here. All right, I'll move back down. I'll sneak back down and tell Terwin we should forego the, his plan. It's ludicrous. Okay, well, say that to me. Like, role play it to me. Yeah. Boss, this is, this is crazy. There's, there's 50 people in there. There's four of those taint men, those Templars. And she just shot fire out of her, her hand and incinerated the new guy. Oh. Oh. Fuck, I don't know what to do then. <laughs> I couldn't see it. So. There's no way your plan, that plan will work. We will die. We will all die. So wait, she set him on fire? You can see him no further than where you stand, uh, Terwin, as you are at the foot of the stairs here. Oh, so I saw him set on fire. Sorry. Yeah. You see him literally, so if Terwin is here Whoops. on the map, okay. you can see him standing <laughs> there. Charred. Yeah, okay. No, I thought that, that was, <coughs> I thought that, that was all beyond my... No, it's... You can see the flash of light and you see him basically collapse to the ground. Uh, that would have been a whole different thing. <laughs> all well, right, we could assume um, he said charge before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what we're saying. Um... Then, uh, yeah, he, uh, he clams up like he has no idea what to do. Um, he just kind of stutters and he's like, you're right. Sneak thief, she says, as she descends down the books from your, what you can see here, Eugene. She begins to slowly kind of walk down and she places the amulet around her neck. You see her eyes level with yours and you, she has the look of somebody who has, been, who has been touched by something dark. She is literally covered in purity seals all along her armor from head to toe. They are basically um, epitaphs from the, the, uh, from the Librum uh, all along her, her male skirt and her breastplate. Her hair is long and gray and scraggly. She looks possessed uh, by a great fury and fervor. Is she heading towards him, or she's walking out? down the stairs? And her eyes do not do not leave Eugene. She does not have a weapon in hand. Yeah, I don't think that matters. Well, I mean, she kind of does. But... <laughs> well, she put the, but the speak I true guess. to me. She raises her hands like such and traces her fingers back and forth. Come to your feet. I stand. You are a lower knight, yes? Y yes. Yes, I am. She looks to his feet and looks to his head. The learner has deemed, and today is not the day that you die. You have been given a second chance, she says. She steps down the books. Repent now for your crimes. Join us. You've been given another life, a second chance by the learner himself. Join our crusade and purify yourself from all the lies, from all the roguery, from the knavery, from your works of evil. I, I don't see how I've done evil. I... I work to restrict knowledge, to keep people safe from what they could learn to hurt themselves. That's not an evil act. I, I see that we are uh, crossing paths, but parallel in course. You have spoken a lie once, and the holiest of holies of the learner. I asked you if you snuck inside, and the learner knew the answer, yet you <clears throat> lied through your teeth. 
the learner judged you, yet you still live. I did not steal anything. A sneak thief is one who pads through places he does not belong. You do not wear the markings of a logician, she says. It's clear that this woman understands the the rankings of the Elornites. Well, neither do you. Would that make you a sneak thief? Stealing into a house that is not yours. This place has been cleansed, she says. The printing presses have been burned. The new ways will go away. Only the written word will survive. Those that have been printed, those have been printed by the devil's machines, shall be burned and incinerated. And so shall Almeron's gates, should the learner have it. Ask about yes. board. You can yeah. burn the gates? Is that what you just said? Almeron's gates. Yeah. No, no. That, that yeah. would be the gates, right? Yeah. The, okay. the workings of, of Almeron the secretive have twisted and burned and burned into the citizens' minds the wrong side of Eloran. The learner's words have been twisted. The secret's hidden. And everyone in Almeron's gate is to be punished those for who the work of a few. Those who are complicit in the blasphemy are as guilty as the blasphemers themselves. Certainly you have seen through Almeron's gates, you have seen our works to cleanse this place. Yes, and I find it horrifying and terrible. It is horrifying and terrible indeed. It is the burden that we would bear. Do you think this is easy for us? I believe it is. She I steps. you enjoy what you do. She begins to slowly walk toward him. Making no moments of aggression, but slowly slink walking toward him with her arms outstretched. This is not an easy task to bear. God has placed this upon us because we can weather the storm. You have weathered the worst storm. You were judged guilty, yet you still stand and live before me. What is your name? Eugene Thornberry. The amulet does not glow. Know that I can see through lies. The learner has taught, has has shown me to see through people. I will warn you once. Do not tell another lie again. Yes, you've made it quite clear what will happen if I do. The learner has made it quite clear what will happen if you do. She corrects you. So the question above board is: Do you want to try to settle this with words, or do you want to try to jump on her where she's at? How close is she to Eugene at this point? Uh, she's been making steps good, towards me. Good question. She's probably about two yards away. So from here to here. If we're looking through the threshold. Can you all see this? Mm -hmm. I, I can't. No, I yeah. 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 yeah, so if you're looking through the threshold here, you can see Eugene. And you can see Inquisitor Evangeline. Fall so well she there. hasn't seen everyone else. In the no, she has no idea anybody else is down there at this point. In fact, she's so close to where Elisa is, she hasn't even seen Elisa. Elisa's still bathed in darkness. I have an idea, but it's reckless as shit. Offers a lot of right here. So this is an above board decision about whether we should engage in well, social intrigue. It's or... it is yes. So the question. So we should act fast. We're going to set a quick timer for you all to discuss above board the pros and cons before she gets too close to Eugene and sees you all. Okay. Because you have just a few moments to, to think before you act. So I'm going to set a timer starting now. Well, I, mean, I think a fight's a bad idea, but I always think a fight's a bad idea. <laughs> right. I could but attempt to run at her and disarm her from the ruby. You have 50 seconds. So, uh... I mean, mincing words with somebody who, who is of an inquisitive bent can get really dangerous, and we can easily lose that. Um, if it's a fight, it's a fight in order to try and subdue her and make it to where they don't want to fight. You have 30 seconds. I could so, attempt to disarm and somebody runs up and so would you Would you rather get involved in um, a religious debate Yes. or, or a fight? Debate. Jason. I think debate. I'm not going to speak. 
Well, it's above yeah, board. Yeah, but above board, would you rather the party get in a, a debate or a fight? Sure. Debate. Ten seconds. Debate. Debate. Let's do fight. Debate. So <laughs> that's where it is. No, I, I, I would rather disarm her, like, but I guess okay. I don't have yeah, to if we So, were... 60 seconds is up. We're now going to move into a social intrigue event. It's been a bit since we've done this, and because um, Eugene is new to the table, we're going to do this in a very remedial way. In fact, I don't think our, I don't think anyone watching Queen of Embers has seen this in quite some time. Have you, so, have you guys used it in Radiator? Mm -hmm. So we'll get. So the first question is this: Who above board will be participating in the social entry event? I so, think I have no choice. Terwin. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I kind of have to. I mean, okay. Uh, what about yourself, Harper? Harper is not a, a debater, so you're not going to take <laughs> no. place in this at all. Uh, okay, Elisa. I am a master debater. Yeah. So okay. Yeah, well, we're going with it. Elisa, that was coming. It's you had to. Right? Warren. Yes. Banneker. Sure. That's like, literally. I want to, but Harper's a spirit. But it's now. literally what I'm built for. Eugene. I feel like I don't get a choice at this point, so I'm in. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Tara, yeah, what really is your social really. class? Yeah. You know, he's talking right at me. Hold on, on guys. Hold on. Let's talk about each other, please. My social class is lowborn. Elisa? Burger, but I have doppelganger if I want to pretend. We'll get that in just a moment. Warren? <laughs> lowborn. <laughs> Banneker? Yeah, you already know. That's right. <laughs> you already know. Eugene's <laughs> Burger, and I have forked a tongue, so she is not my social class, so I'll get a plus 20 on guy. Or so, I think I'm better than ever. <laughs> Guys, let's let's not talk over each other, please, because I'm trying to pull this together. So, Eugene, are you order or chaos aligned? Um. Oh, you mean one of my currently skewed oh. towards? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> chaos. Okay, Banneker. First time ever, chaos. Wow. wow. Warren. Order. What? Yeah. Elisa. The world has turned chaos. upside down. Yeah. Terwin. Uh, even. Even. Okay. Ooh, new to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we now know who's going to take part in the social intrigue event. So what we're going to discuss first is what you wish to achieve in this in this discussion with her, and this is all, you can take part in this, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike. So this is all very this is all above board. What is it you wish to achieve in this interaction with the Inquisitor Evangeline Falwell? Save. This is an open discussion, uh, so no turns, just. Right. I'm hoping that they won't execute these people. That's what I want. I'm hoping they don't execute us. <laughs> right. Well, yes, true. I'll add yours to my turn since you're not in this one. Okay. Uh, convince them that they're done with their inquisition as they've gotten rid of the books and the printing presses. That's really good. Just leave. Yeah. From which you came. What else do you wish to achieve while you're here? Uh, I think that's kind of our best recourse at this point is to tell, uh, let her understand that They've come, they've finished their... They've won their They've division. won. Go try to destroy Almeren's gates with your... And see if the learner wants you to continue. So, everyone, any, anything else that you wish to achieve while you're here with her? Her, I, we have to leave. I want to gain some insight and see this voice inside her head. Okay. <laughs> I always have my own agenda in these things. I, oh, I you do. Uh, I'd like to know what she intends for the Alornites and the, that remain. Okay. But, and at a, at a glance, could I tell the people that they have to be executed? Are they predominantly Alornites? Are they dressed in the garb of an Alornite? Well, uh, unfortunately, you're you have. You I've been preoccupied. Your, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, there's no real way to turn that. But we will we will determine that during the interaction. But you survived. I did. Yeah. I did. So, if there's nothing else to be gained, the next question is, above board, what is at stake? Our, Our lives. lives. Our lives. Our lives. Uh, the entire lives. city? Yeah. For a nice I'm pretty sure they're going to continue this <laughs> What's the outside mistake? of Almeren's Gate if they... God damn it. I have, the gates, I have right? a feeling that she has access some, to some of the stuff that we are looking for, like the esoteric air Rindle, and... If we botch this, then we lose access to that sort of thing. The what's it? Who is that? Yeah, I don't know what that is. Bless you. Thank you. So, again? Uh, I, I think she has access to the Esoterica Durindal. Um, it, it's a book that we're, we've been looking for for a while. Oh. Um, 
and if like if she has it and we botch this relationship, like we lose access to it. So it's interesting that her opposition is to the printed word, not written word, but printed word. That's interesting. Yeah, that, that was one thing that just kind of confused me on this. It's the like if they're, if they're printing her book, is that okay? But apparently not. Yeah. That has to be handled. I'm, I'm kind of curious as to why, what's her opposition to the printed word? Yeah. Mass, mass, mass access, probably. I would say mass knowledge. Yeah, is it just the mass knowledge? Which also confuses me as to why she in any way is hostile towards the Lorenites, they have a, a, a concurrent goal of mass knowledge is a bad idea. Uh-huh. That's, a good thing. So that's, that's kind of my personal objective, too, is to find out why she's so opposed. Yeah, so remember, we're talking about what's at stake. What's at stake. Um, yeah. Yeah. So if you, take, if you think about those things as kind of personal objectives, like what is at stake I mean, by pursuing that, by pursuing that? It's not just their lives, but what else is at stake? Ending this madness. Like I said, the entire city. Yeah, the lives of the people who are here about to be mm-hmm. executed. As well as those outside this region. Also the entire Alorani College and everyone who's part of the Alorani's. Also, the consequence of us failing is she gets enough power to take that key position in their political order. Yeah. So if she's seen as too successful, that could sway her entire cause to her rally point. And probably, considering she can, uh, you know... Immolate line of sight? Well, she can interrogate a lot better than me. It's also possible, just from a personal perspective, that we could have issues with our agency. If we're supposed to be agents that keep secrets and know things. It's a lot of things that we know. I think <clears throat> the biggest thing for all in this way is this town the knowledge we can gain from that access point and a bigger shift in the political power. I think those are the three big things that we're risking here. The consequences. Yeah. Life, death, and the pursuit of happiness. That's... <laughs> so, okay. These are, these are good. These are very good. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> What's this thing? A lot. Okay, so she is currently. Okay. Okay. So now that you've stated both your objectives above board, some personal objectives to you that you want to gain out of this, and you know now what is at stake, the question is what social tactic will you use to achieve this? So remember, in a social intrigue event, your success or failure on the die rolls doesn't necessarily determine whether you win or lose. It's simply selecting a series of temperaments that I will use to roleplay Inquisitor Evangeline Falwell based on her current disposition, based on the results of your role. And the skills you may use are bargain, charm, guile, interrogation, intimidate, leadership, and rumor. So, Terwin, uh, what, what social tactic will you use to achieve these goals? Everyone will try to relate to her as uh, in front, being in charge of a group of people. Yes. Um, and uh, knowing a position that she is in when being in leadership, so he's going to use leadership. Okay. Elisa? Uh, Elisa's going to use rumor to prove out that the people have now been cowed into not uh, mass producing written word any longer. Warren? Warren wants to relate to her in the fact that she is possessed. He is possessed, and they should settle their differences amicably. I don't know quite what that skill would be. Probably maybe charm? Incantation. Okay. (laughs) Banneker, what about yourself? It's got to be charm for me. It's going to... Okay. And I'm just going to be the charming fellow I am. (laughs) And finally, Eugene. I have to pick just one, right? You can only pick one. That's mm. right. I would like to use bargain. Okay. You think Try. you'll you think you'll achieve your goals by using bargain? Is what you're saying? I personally think my stronger role is guy <laughs> or the wrong class, but uh, for what I'm going for is that our our goals are similarly aligned in the with like that withheld knowledge for safety's sake. And to reach a common ground with it through bargaining with her. 
can still trick somebody by telling the truth. Can, can one use education? <laughs> no, I didn't think so. so it, just, it just doesn't make sense. No, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like lying about the truth I believe in. Just yeah. so, sense to me. so, bargain, to, even so here's what we do next. Uh, we are going to make a series of skill tests to determine temperaments. I will not tell you the, the temperament you generate, but you will simply tell me if you succeed or fail. Terwin, you are a lowborn. Yep. She is lowborn. Oh. You are chaos aligned. No. She. No, no. Sorry. Dead, dead even. even. Terwin, dead even. Sorry. Uh, she is order aligned. Okay. Sure. 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 So Terwin. Finally goes in my favor. Your test being the same social class, it is standard. Standard. Standard leadership. Standard leadership is uh, 58. Critical. We got 99. Oh. Critical failure! Oh. Oh. Yeah. Well, you're going to be on fire. Yeah. So when you critically fail, oh. not only is it treated as the temperament that's currently in the in the file, you guys, uh, you guys can see this, but it's treated as the worst. So, Elisa, you are a burger, you're a different social class, and you are chaos aligned. Your test will be hard. Could doppelganger or fork tongue potentially <laughs> help me in this situation? Well, you're using rumors, and so, um... Is that still... I mean, is that deceit? No, it's good guile test. I think, uh, I think that if you, you're attempting to disguise your... Who your your I'm your a common person. Burger. That's right. I don't think you should make a roll for this thing, but just assume that it happens. Okay. If you want to spend a fortune point to do it. Otherwise, it'll have no application. And that gives this. me a plus ten. So. Yeah. Cool. <sighs> no. no. Okay. No, we might need that. It's a hard test. Hard, hard rumor. Uh, so I have a sixty-two rumor. Mm-hmm. That's so forty-two. It's a 65. Um, Keep it a reroll. One of us needs to succeed. Uh, uh, bring more chances. Okay. It's only determining temperament. Well, actually. All right. Yeah. It doesn't uh, necessarily. Okay. Will I will. I will wait. So you're gonna accept it? Yeah, I feel. Okay. She probably hated me anyway, so whatever. <laughs> Well, that's an assumption, but okay. I'm pretty sure she Lauren, is. you are order aligned. She is order aligned. She oh. is also lowborn. You are lowborn. Oh. In your rolling charm. Mm -hmm. so, you're both so your test is going to be easy. Okay. That's a good thing because my charm is not that great. Yeah. Uh, that will make my roll a 56% chance to succeed. Okay. Mm -hmm. I rolled a 32. Whoa. So success? Yes. It's a good thing because if I failed, it would have been a critical fail. Banneker, oh you are chaos aligned. You, you are a different social <laughs> class, so your charm standard. is standard. That's correct. Okay. That's my drawback. All right. And, well, uh, I guess that fell out of my hand. I'm on his uh, anyway, I have a... Hey, fail. guys, please. Um, Standard, so I have a 70, 77, uh, and I got a 25. Okay. Mm. Very nice. So we'll that up Did you see step. it go? Oops, something in my hand. Okay. And finally, Eugene. You are chaos aligned, you are a different social class, it's going to be a standard bargain. 55, <clears throat> 49, success. Nice. Okay. Wow. So three successes, three failures, we're dead even. Two uh, failures. Didn't, didn't, no. Unless you got a crit failure. Uh, crit failures oh. always count as a double. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, think that's, I think that's older rule. That's an older rule. Oh, it's an okay. Sorry. But it checks out. So, probably pretty accurate. That's just the rules. We still have to. Yeah, the sound of the congregation dies down. Her sermon has, of course, ended at this point. I should probably turn that off. Thank you, YouTube, for providing a sermon uh, that I can instantly tap for sound. That's great. The others begin to come forward around you. And she doesn't take a step back, but she holds her hands in a steeple like such. You did not come alone, I see. 
No. I suspected as much. How did you find your way into this din of iniquity? Speak the truth. Know that the learner has given me a gift to see through lies. She speaks to everyone. The tunnel. She locks eyes with Eugene for a moment and turns back toward you. We came in through a tunnel. Dressed for war. Senator, so are you and all of your followers? The war is over. Yes, you have obviously won. The fight is done. Again, you won. We agree with you. Then why have you trespassed into this place? You are no Elorinites. Why are you? Listen, I mean... To cleanse it, right? Right. Uh, you've, uh, you lead about 50 people here. I lead about five. You know, I understand what it's like to be in your position. Uh, well, really... Let's check out. <laughs> I know how to roleplay it now that I couldn't have failed. So, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, worried that you know, there's a lot of people there that he's going to die, and I, I'm not sure they necessarily have to die, you know, for, for just living here. These, the instigators of the blasphemy, those who would pass through the propaganda of the devil's machine, <coughs> those who work its words, those who tell lies daily, those who have spread disinformation for decades. Those who have followed a job and followed the orders of perhaps hires and people who have hired them. Forget not the story of the giver who murdered thousands in Gothmorin who were simply following the orders of a soldier. But we forgive the blacksmith who makes the sword. And we forgive the horse that tramples the man underneath. That does not make it right. No, it doesn't. But we don't put them to death for the peddling trade that they work. You put people to death, you're as accountable as they are. Yeah, and I mean... He's got a good point there. I mean, you've won. I mean, They've you're victorious. Yeah, and you're victorious. Go bit. burn the gates... Open the city? Did you ask them to stop nicely ahead of time? Or after you burned half the village? Bold words for somebody who hovers at death's door, she says. Right. But she I does mean, not make any movements, sudden movements. I mean, me, me Elisa, probably... you can kind of, at this point, you can kind of tell that she's feeling a bit uneasy. I mean, the throng me... had begins to slowly filter behind her. They do not meet means to draw their weapons. The Inquisitors come first, and then the flagellants and zealots. Me, Bob, a surgeon, says that I, you know, I shouldn't be in so much butter, but I mean, I don't think I should be put to death for it, right? You can see Terwin begin to take a couple steps back as the numbers begin to swell and grow behind her, as the shadows of her congregation fold around her like some great voluminous cloak. In Inquisitor, uh, you sought to clear this place. To make sure that the the words could not be passed on, the heresy that you see in these words cannot be continued to be printed. They cannot. At this point, you have achieved. Why continue to do this? These people have already watched their entire lives be destroyed at this point. Can you not let them make amends? Until Edward Booker is put to the guillotine, there is no victory. Are these nine people called Edward Booker? Bring Booker before me, she says. They begin to drag a man in chains forward, who has the face of Josephine, yet male. He does not look as appears he was molested, save for a bruised eye. His clothes are not torn, he's not covered in smoke. He appears lightly wounded. I do not push necessarily for this man's death either, but you have nine people sitting in front of you, not one. You have named one. Edward Booker. Tell them your crimes, she says. As she says this, she produces a blindfold around her eyes. As she does so, she raises a sword from her scabbard and places it before him, tip to nose. 
and Edward begins spouting. I have spread lies throughout all of Kael Tyrion for ten decades, for ten years of my life. I have printed the word that has been passed to me by the logicians of Kael Tyrion without inquiring as to the meaning of those words. Those words have misled the people. And then she says every single word, the, the embers and the opal around her neck do not flicker like they did for you. The truth. She puts the sword in the sheath. She undoes the blindfold. He shall Has pass. the man done no good? This man spreads propaganda. You have heard his crimes that he has admitted to them readily. I understand that. What other what other recourse would there be for someone who has misled hundreds, nay, thousands of people who not only who live in Kael Tyrion, but those who have passed beneath the bluffs, upon the broadsheet, within the penny dreadfuls? Within the printed word, printed by the thousands daily, spread herein from the Axwater to the west to Aglador and the in Galleon, and to the east in Ro the Rovain Girdle. What other way could this man repent save that for death? Uh, death is easy. Yes. Death is the easiest cost you can pay. Edward Booker. How could how what what if he were to print the word of your God, your leadership, your guidance. Would one decade of punishment that he's dealt to the people you believe he's misled be outdone by three decades of good deeds? I am a truth speaker. I have never told a lie in my entire life. Well, what if you dictated him to speak the truth? He's a man that works. He can't work when he's dead. Edward Booker, tell them the ways in which you have chosen to be punished. <laughs> Edward raises his chains rattling, his voice trembles. Death by guillotine. He lowers his head. I mean, he looks a little bruised. Was that a little forced? He look, She looks to the Inquisitors. He was lucky. He did not put up much of a fight. It was wise to do so. Lucky. And Master Bo and my young Master and Master I'm sorry. And Edward Booker has chosen. He has chosen the path to be cleansed of his crimes. He will be sent to the well and judged by the custodian. Would it be easier to make the man spend one decade, as he said, repenting, doing God's work, writing out the words that you dictate? His flesh is weak. His hands are not made of leather, but of soft, soft skin. Man he cannot can wield the flail. These others that you see before you have come from all walks of life, from the Amber Isles, have fought in the strife, some from the north, others have lived long, hard lives as mercenaries and killers of men. Yet they stand here in repentance, and have given up limbs and life and eye so for the truth. So killers can repent, but people who write words can't. There's no logic in that. You look to the people, the throng of zealots. This is the first time you've kind of seen them in the light. You realize, and it kind of kind of crystallizes almost immediately, that even the zealots you fought on the docks had all plucked out one of their eyes. <clears throat> what, of, what of those that repented? And when did they, did they get that chance because of the Lena? Or was it also because of the martyr? She Ranged. strokes her chin. Isn't there any mercy that all sides of the source would show? Not just the learner? She pauses to consider. The steward's blessing, the mercer's martyr. I hear you that you, your voice in your head, the, the, learner, learner, the learner himself. Is it, is it truly the learner? Could it be something else? Something more insidious that speaks to you? I know this. I know this voice. I hear it every day. <coughs> it, it, it frightens me to think that you may th you may think you're hearing the divine, but it could be something worse. Well, I, I, if you if you're hearing things in your mind and it's not your own thoughts, I would question them. She pauses for a moment and turns toward Warren. What is your name? As this happens, the entire 
congregation falls silent. And then you begin to hear in your head, Warren. Warren, she says. But there is something else. She stares toward the long shadow behind them that flickers or moves with the, the movement of the candle, blending the other shadows. She pours honey in my ear, whispers evil sayings, makes me question. Pilgrimage for nearly 20 years, barefoot and scourge in hand, to seek the truth, to mete out justice, to understand the voice in my head. And that's when it dawned upon me like a tiny mote and a brilliant spark. I awoke as if I had emerged from the womb once more, born again. And I knew it was the voice of the learner. He who had guided me for so long, and I did not know who it was. That's when I knew that I knew Kael Tyrion, and I knew Almeron's gates, was the source of the Alornite scourge. It did not happen slowly. It happened quick. When Almeron the Secretive brought the printing press here nearly a decade ago, that is when the lies were peddled. That's when the books were hidden. That's when the secrets were kept from the people. The public became ignorant and dumb, befuddled by the propaganda of the Elornites. I am no Elornite, but I know their workings. She leans in. My, when I was a boy, my dooming was, was said to me, will die in a pool of your own blood and it will not be your own. I never understood it until the voice started talking to me. Sometimes she took control and I knew that one day she will take control and it will be the death of me, the death of my body. But will it be her doing or mine? I, I question sometimes. I, I have a feeling that sometimes I question whether I am truly the one that owns my soul or was it her all along I, I don't know what to think and I think if, if there's a voice talking to you can you really know the tr can, a, can a mortal truly know the, wor the words of the learner I think not it's for only for her interpretation only, only through years of study through reading books in fact I I never knew how to read until I came to Durendal, until my, until she became, she made herself known to me, and now every time I look at the words on a page, they, the words erupt into my mind. I, I've never been taught to read, but now I know. It's, it's, it's not a pleasant feeling. It, it's, it's forbidden knowledge. I shouldn't know these things, but we're were it my choice, I, I would learn to read myself and, and study and study the Lieberman and know for a fact what I do is right. You are on the verge of an awakening that this has nothing to do with Edward Booker's life. If you are seeking to find common ground with me because you believe that you have been guided here by the learner or the gods, I'm afraid you are sorely mistaken. I haven't been guided here by a god before. So. There's only one who has ever been spoken to by God, and it is I. God or the learner? The God, she says. I have seen that which will come following the last cataclysm. I have seen beyond, and I know with my third eye that a great cataclysm will befall all of the Rovain Girdle. It'll be bathed in blood. 
It will burn in fire, and it shall be flooded with the storm, she says. The voice tells you, you can never truly know, though, until it happens. Nothing is set in stone. No nothing is destined. It can be changed. We are instruments of God's will. Booker stands in our way. He has peddled lies perpetually. What other means would he would we see to him if he was not to be killed here? You could make him print the word of your God. Make him spread the truth. The printing presses have all been burned. Never again will those infernal machines oh, no. infect the minds of those who kill write. Tyrion. You said they're soft enough not to wield a thresher, but a pen, quill, ink, paper. That was a soft-handed man's game. And those are worth more in his hands than a sword in yours. He has a tongue still at this point, obviously. Can he not can speak, speak truth on your behalf? Drag him with you. He what of the others? Pull him up on your pulpit. The other he, eight. He will not stand as we march south. He will not live as we come to to the holy city of Rowaline when we come to claim the rightful throne. I speak with God's voice. I shall ascend the golden throne, and I shall be the holy mother. He will not make it. He is too soft. You have convinced me. I suppose that Edward Booker deserves a very different fate. You, she says. Woman. She levels her eyes toward Elisa. You have a woman's mind. Children, women are hardened in their own ways that men cannot truly understand. You have clearly stepped away from the life of a lady, and you have carved your own path, as have I. I have forget I have for I have forget gave my child rearing years to see to my mission, my holy mission. What say you of Booker? Booker. What would you have of him if it was your choice? If it was mine, you gave him the easy way by slitting his throat when it came to you. Shouldn't someone atone for the sins that they do instead of getting an easy way out? You give him an exit, he'll take it. And then take an easy way. We don't. We understand that sometimes there's things that have to be worked out that cannot simply be solved by one answer. So maybe, if you seek a woman's mind, you should understand that a woman doesn't assume that something can be answered by one action. Make him atone. The atonement should not be mine to give to him. It's not. But you have a voice in your head. And obviously that voice at this point is listening somewhat to something someone else is saying. And it's not stating that at this point you should kill him. So what does it say for atonement? Maybe at first it called for blood, but now maybe it calls for sweat. Come to me, Booker. She withdraws the sword. Will any of you interrupt? Step forward. Elisa's not. Wait, what? I mean, so, would we know what she's even doing? No. Yeah. Well, we, all we've seen her do is do the true thing with That's the right. sword. So, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna let her continue, right? Everyone? Anyone? What did, uh, what was the last thing that you said? Make him a tone. What the voice tells you to do with him. She said reinforce it, basically. Hard labor or just death. Can I scrutinize the look in her eye? Because yeah. can I, can I, I, I try know the feeling when someone else is, is taking control. Unfortunately, uh, oh. your scrutiny test will not work upon her. <sighs> okay. Uh, yes. I worth a shot. <laughs> raise my hand. Wait, what do you intend? Atonement. She taps the sword gently upon the bonds of the bonds wither away like energy, collapsing, disappearing, both from his wrists and his legs, as you witness this miracle. She places the sword back in her sheath. Edward Booker, 
She places her hand upon his head. You will walk the righteous path with this woman. Should you veer from it in your, in your atonement, no, I shall see it. And I shall send an assassin to return and take your life. You will serve this woman. She removes her hands, and you can see this ointment that she kind of withdrew from this, like, vial and wipes it on her hand leg. We have one. But the other two will be put to death. She turns about up on heel, the entire congregation parts for her to walk between them as the other two citizens begin screaming the chains rattling as Edward Booker stands there he's grabbing at the bottom of your robes he's pleading and he's crying he's like thank you for saving my life and the entire throng is letting her kind of she they step aside to be to swell around her and the entire throng is walking away through the Lyceum and we will stop here we'll resume in just a few oh, moments okay. <laughs> <laughs>
Sister Evangeline's entire congregation falls in behind her as the other two citizens are caught in the throng of zealots and Templars, as you have saved the life of Edward Booker. But at what cost? The great doors <laughs> open into the, uh, into the winter day as the clock... Hey guys, we should probably begin leave. to ring. Uh, yes. Uh, Booker. I mean, if they... Who are the other two individuals? Just walk and talk, folks. Walk and talk. Yeah, we should probably go. Um, I'll, I'll trip. If they, um, when they find out certain things, we probably need to not be here. Oh, I'm afraid. Booker, who are the other two individuals? He is. He doesn't answer me. I'm going to slap him. Yeah, he's at this point. He's kind of, he's just kind of unsure how to react. He, oh, where is Jonah? Jonah's downstairs. It's fine. Let's go. Oh, oh. Jonah. Jonah's. I never saw Jonah. Edward, who are those two? Now the printmakers in the city. Friends, he says. The throng leaves the interior oh. of the Lyceum. We nothing need, we can do. We have nothing, to go. Nothing we can do for them. Do they have families? Everyone has family. Yep. We saved one. Let's leave. Good. I, I can't talk anymore. And I'm all waiting to be the last one. You're to leave to where? Back for the... <coughs> Back through the tunnel. She just like ignored us and walked away with her entire That's conversation. Exactly what she did. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. unless, unless she agreed with us. She won. She's she's victorious. Unless, she's going south. Unless you wish to watch the spectacle. No one. There's something to be said for those saying prayers while while you're being executed. Can I see the guillotine from inside now? The doors are wide open into the snowbound plaza. I do believe discretion might be the better part of valor at this point. We should D go. Didn't, yeah. we, didn't you booby trap said guillotine? Yes, that's go. why we should probably go. We should, we go. should move. We then. should go. Yeah, because well, they're not going home. to be happy once they figure out if it's supposed to be. Edward, go. At least so we'll follow behind him. Through. Yes, she, you only need me to get back through. through. Through, through there? He yeah. wades into the water. Come on. You walk through us. <sighs> okay. You fall into the tunnel. And he grows silent. How did you... How did you know to find me? We're the Defrain Agency. We know things. It's our job to find things. Once we're behind a locked door... We can discuss things. We should be quiet. Where's this tunnel go? He says. And I just push he appears, him. He appears really, really anxious. Elisa looks at him and goes, Let's go. The tunnel is small and constricted. As you're walking through this very, and those who are taller than five foot six must kind of hunker over. Oh, I'm, I'm over. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Those tall guys. <laughs> very, very narrow. And it's only like. Maybe, maybe ten minutes at best until you come to the other the other door. You withdraw the key from your necklace, and you clink, 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 turn it three times left at the key, and then do the the movements as you have been taught as an archivist and a Lorank archivist, and the door unlocks. Lisa marks it in her head again, just to make sure that she remembers it. Well, it's single file. There's no way you can see past. Yeah. Okay, fine. So, listen. <laughs> as you emerge from the tunnel, you appear to be very, very deep underground. And Banner Cries, you look up, you can see that there are these these other kind of levels above you as you realize you're b far below ground. And there's all these books tucked away in these long hallways. And there's these heavy chandeliers hanging up on like 30 foot long uh, links of chain. And on the other side is this aged-looking preacher who can only be Father Bartlesby, and a very, very young knight who can only be Sir Guillaume Genevieve II. You 
You made it. That, uh, Sir Guillaume yeah. says. We well, did. We can only talk her out of not killing one. Father Barbelsby lowers his head. That is... But she will leave after she's, she's leaving. handled business with the other two. So she plans to move south to roll in. He lowers his head. She plans to take the golden throne. You see him wipe a tear from his face. We tried. I One out of three is not bad when you're dealing with a madman. You can shoot fire out of a... A disc. He sniffles. She almost got the fourth one free. We need to get word out as soon as possible. Isn't that where your father is? It is. It's also where the holy city is. Um, the Southern Knights I are. understand. That goes without saying. Just, just making sure I understand. <clears throat> Somebody needs to march out and destroy these people. I think it's as simple as that, Sir Guillaume says. Yes. What are the you and what army? What are the says. Southern Knights for? The Southern Knights will crush this woman if she intends to draw her weapon in the Holy City. She, she plans to take the Golden Throne, and I don't think she means to be stopped. She has at her disposal certain things that I don't even think your knights can do. I mean... Can you call fire from nothing? Because she did. She tried to immolate me. No, she did immolate you. You just didn't die. I respectfully declined to be immolated. But you did not consent. I did not consent. <laughs> Southern knights need to be warned. This rabble is coming. Fireballs be nods. We can send one down river. Well, we You've have done a... good to save Edward's life. Birds might be faster. Mm-hmm. Birds are unreliable, Sir Guillaume says. Well, that's why you send multiple word. River travel might not be reliable at this time either. Unless we we appreciate don't. your recommendations, but we know what we're doing, Sir Guillaume says. Glad someone does. Book well, of, Book of Lives, Father Bartlesby says as he clean, clears his eyes, still red and swollen with tears. Not to be rude about it, but you claim to be know what you're doing as you are locking yourself inside of a tower halfway underground. Tell me what this woman said, Father Bartlesby inquires. Madness. A great deal. She said she speaks. The learner speaks through her. Yes, yeah, yeah, and she said God speaks yeah, through yeah, her. Yeah, God is in the... Well, it's it's in true. She, did, one. she said the learner in the beginning, and then she said God. The sure. one true... The yes. one true God. And the cataclysm is um, coming. Yes, that seemed the more pressing as a second cataclysm. You disagree that the cataclysm is not coming? Sir Guillaume inquires almost incredulously. Wait, wait, well, didn't, cataclysm didn't, is going to happen, obviously. It's coming wait, at some wait, point. Wait, didn't we just go through the last cataclysm? So it means last is in previous, not as in final. That's a very narrow way to look at things. You don't think that we're in the end days? Do you think it all just ends in a single snap of the fingers? He says. Uh, uh, for it was the last cataclysm. As in, there's no more cataclysms. By that definition, we're all dying. Because at some point we do. Yeah, because she basically said the next. She did not say the last. She did not use scriptural words as using the last cataclysm. Father Bartlesby strokes his beard. If she would have said the last, I'm sure we would have picked up on that. That is it. That is a phrase that I do not want to hear. Well, she said, we're at the end of days, the cataclysm is to come, and she marches on the golden throne. Ah. That is, that was her words. Something, was, something. She didn't use the word last. <laughs> bathe the lands in blood, she something, something, fire from the sky, something, something. They have to upon us. Oh, rolling oh, will be flooded. Ripping eyes out of the What else did she say? Well... Just that those who speak lies in her presence, she can see quite through them. They should be punished. Could she? She saw his. I would, it wasn't a lie. She in accused me of a sneak thief, but I stole nothing. But in her words... Anybody who sees a po- opposition to her is at danger of immolation. And yes, mm. I think I got lucky by the narrowest of margins. That's about it. Maybe because you didn't believe you were lying, but she did. 
Well, I, I, think it was a, I think it was a matter of dialect. Huh. It's, it's yeah, that, that's pretty what terrible that. when you can be burnt to a crisp or based on dialect. Uh, I believe, yes. She used her sword to make... Well, that's Booker. Edward. She would point that sword at you with a blindfold on and force you to speak. She be in, he been gesticulating, describing this woman's words. Mm-hmm. Would, were not her words, but someone else's. He couldn't describe whose they were, and no, when he it. heard the words from her, they did not sound like her words, and he goes on, he begins, he just kind of breaks down at this point as he's being, he's being, he's clearly addled by all of this. Uh, what was that other thing she was doing with her hands? It looked like she was writing in the air. Yeah, tracing. Uh, could I use, uh, I don't know what secret that is. signs to try and determine what she was doing yeah, actually, with her hands? I was, I was gonna... Oh, without a doubt, she was, it was some sort of ritual, you know that. You don't know what ritual, but gotcha. you know it was a ritual. With my background in the Dufresne, could I potentially, since I came from Alexia's division, could I potentially have an idea of what it was? You could spend some time thinking about it, with, but not right now. It will take it will take deep thought. With multi, but yes, the answer is yes. You can try, but we will have That's you fine. roll soon. With multilingual, would I have been able to kind of get a, a confirmance of what she was trying to do with her hand singles? You saw her move her hands. You don't have a skill or an incantation, so you have no idea. No, oh. it was very ritualized. Uh, I wouldn't let the priest tell you. Uh, so she says she says she is finished here though. Yes. Right. She, she says that on the uh, devil's machines, aka printing presses, were burnt. Yes. We did convince the lives her. have been stopped. She plans to potentially knock down Al Marin's gates. I don't think so anymore. She said God wills it. If God wills it. But they do plan on marching, I believe it was March South, right? March South. Mm-hmm. I mean we isn't the implication of never mind. We're dealing with we're dealing with an inquisitor. You can't talk reason yeah. with someone who speaks to a god. Right. She's done Is great damage to god? our She's great damage to the Allure Knights. Father Barlesby says. She yes. made it very clear she was not an Allure Knight, but she was spoken to by Allure. Yeah. Uh, For the learner. A uh, truth sayer. Well, Lauren is dead, so. Yep, we I know that. Think that's true. Yeah, we're aware. Well, no First less. <laughs> I question. I just, I just start. Get, I start laughing. I'm like. <coughs> <coughs> oh. Something in your throat. <clears> throat> Nothing. Yeah. Um, father bot- bottles be. I'll free my wife's. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Edward, uh, I know you're real tall. Uh, about, about those that were the Eugene. 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 And, uh, the Eugene. And it's not sitting right with me. And I do know that, that there's something that we can do about it, even though it may be too late. We can pray to the martyr. Pray to the martyr for their souls. And they go through the well and meet the custodian. I'd like to join you if you'd have it. He nods, almost in reservation to the suggestion. He will lead a short prayer, and he will speak of the passing of his brother and his and his brother's son, his nephew. I didn't know that's who we were trying to say. That was above board, sorry. Well, Father Rawls, we never said anything about it. Oh, okay, okay. We didn't know either. Okay. Well. Yeah, my comment about one out of three ain't bad. It's pretty awful. No, oh, man. <laughs> Come on, sir. <laughs> one out of three ain't bad, We brother should and proceed son. with caution, Sir Guillaume says. Let us ascend to the surface and see what has befallen Helmeron's gates. Wait, before we leave, Jonas. on our way in, we came upon the tomb of the Lorne, and we recovered a, an old artifact. The Laurel of the Lorne. We see this place here. 
very secure. I think it would be best to keep it here. No? As Warren looks to the tomb of Lauren? We did come across the tomb of Lauren. Well, it said it was. The entire time. Lauren has been with you the entire time. I mean, we just met you like less than 24 hours ago, but sure, and the entire time. You know, sometimes <sighs> it's a good idea to keep certain knowledge safe from other people who would abuse it. Now you're thinking like in the Lauren I. Mm hmm. Lauren is not entombed in Kale Tyrion. He ascended as the learner. Did he? Er. Then Have you what? not read your Librem? Then okay, what? bro. What we came across then was not Elorin, if that's the case. Elorin is not here in the hall. Do bodies ascend? If you read the scripture and the Decalogue, you will know from blah 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 blah, his flesh turned to energy and he joined with the well. And uh, as uh, he this... ascended, he became as the learner. And he goes through this quick oh, bit, of, bit of scripture. Yes. You roll your eyes... But you know the truth. You've been taught the truth. I have been told the truth. But there's also the fact that sometimes men use words and they're not the correct ones. And sometimes women use words and can conjure fire from the other world. So do not tell me you do not believe in the Libra. I do not believe gender was the thing I was bringing in. But the whole of human There's no mind. time for this, Sir Guillaume yeah, 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 says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, uh, whatever. I mean, we thought it was... We were obviously wrong, so we can move on. Mm. I mean, perhaps he can take a look at it, and he'd know for sure. I don't think he'd have such interest in things. Would you? Heretical items. I am a tomb robber, Father Bartlesby says, and any fool who was trying to sell you a diadem that belongs to Eloran is a liar. All right. Well then, moving on. Yeah, we'll move on. Let us ascend. Yeah. You come outside. Oh, do they not have windows up there? Like, do we actually want to open the door? Yeah, there's no window. There's no window. Remember, you are deep below the earth. The, yeah. If you recall, the Lyceum is above, and the Archivist Library is below. Yeah, and even the portion. I'm just, I'm just asking them, Lauronites don't have any way to look out. The portion that's above. Didn't have any windows either. I'm just saying they don't have any sort of secret way to look oh. out. Oh, ah, okay. Nope. All right. No people. <laughs> what if Jonah? And that door's too thick to put your ear to, so. Yeah, we came in for Jonah. Oh yeah, where's Jonah? At? In due time. So I think it's due time. It's past time. I think you should hold your words. Someone has just died. This man's brother and his nephew. Hold your tongue, fool. Have they died? He opens the door into the plaza. You can see that the auto guillotine is slowly smoldering, but there are two bodies lying in the snowdrift. And you can see the snowdrifts are covered in blood. All of the throng is gone. All that is left in Almere in the gates of the smell of cinder and the whipping of the wind. As if they were never here. Only the remnants. Does it appear that they left? Because I'm assuming there's obviously going to be like a large stampede of footprints. Does it look right like now. they left towards like the main gate, or? It looks like they went toward the docks. Do we? Was there a bunch of boats there or anything that could have transported them? There was another bo a boat. Another boat, yes. Okay. Another sloop. Hang on, sloop. Sloop, hang on. <clears throat> I guess they are not going to destroy the gates. No. I think they're going Father, do you need help with your your brother? I'd really quite like that, yes. Oh. It's a solemn affair at this point. Yeah. Assume you kind of go through the motions and day and night will pass. And the next morning comes. And you are still in the archivist's library. At some point or another, Jono will awaken from his slumber. <laughs> Edward has managed to calm down. You all have managed to rest and regain uh, your your back to uh, un unhindered on your prowl condition track. Uh, 
<coughs> question, actually. It's the rules ruling. So, uh, I have, since I have persecution complex, mm -hmm. uh, it does not move me down to imperiled, right? I would stay at unhindered because I was unhindered. Oh, no. You move down to... Uh, so... So you cannot complex. recover. So you can't recover, so you stay where you're at. Okay, I'm just yeah. making sure that yep. I don't... You just stay where you're at. Okay. So at some point or another, you'll manage to gather in the lower the lower library with Booker and with Jonah Sparrow. And Jonah looks really strung out. His hair has turned gray in places. He had this really haunted look on his face. Well, it's been almost a half a year since we've seen each other. He says his voice is a long drawl. Is that, that really you, Banneker? Yeah, Jonah. How are you? Looking, uh, looking rough around the edges here. Got a couple of questions for you, but well, it ain't been easy. He says, "You realize that he his 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 breath smells a bit of booze, unsurprisingly." Boy, are you alive! He says, and he approaches Eugene, and he kind of holds you in a, a bear hug. Oh heavens! The fire crackles at a nearby hearth. Somewhere in the smoke, you imagine pours above the city. I hold my breath. So, How did you find your way here? What? Warren, Warren pulls the journal out of his back. His back. We use this to trace you back. Sorry, we had to read it, but this is how we found you. If it wasn't for Father Bottles being circuit, y'all might be might have been dead out there. What does all this mean? These pictures. I mean, I hate to ask, but he quickly takes the book out of your hands. You never you mind about that. Says. You've been through a lot. Never you mind. Surely they can't be real. Uh, Never you mind. I say for the third time, and he holds his fingers up like this, invoking the uh, the nine father, or the ninth father. Or nuns. As uh, I mean, I can't believe I'm the one saying this, but there's a certain art to conversation. You don't just. Uh, You know, bring up sensitive subjects like that. And sometimes you don't at all. Listen, Jonah, I'll hold out my uh, hand to him and I'll, like, glad hand him. I'm just pleased and punched to see that you're alive. Mr. Forrester, I thought our paths would never cross again, and here we stand. I hoped that they wouldn't for your sake. But uh, I'm glad to see yeah, you. Yeah, because we seem to always get you in more trouble. How's it come? You how's it come? You come? You find you find Master Eugene. How did this all come to be? Well, we was looking for you on on the ship, and for a moment we thought you was him. Huh. Oh, he was you. We were trying to find more information about that Siobhan. Sea he looks toward Booker, and and Booker kind of nods, and you you go ahead and tell him. Booker says. Jonah says, I came here to the King Almeron's gates. I was sent here by Master Hexenstern to, to do a bit of business about the city. He's looking for a book, and my friend here, Edward, I knew he trafficked in these things. No subterfuge or anything like that, just Master Hexenstern has a lot of irons of the fire right now. What Research, he calls it. What book were you looking for? A book called the Esoterica Durendal. Are you able to find it? Booker clears his throat. I know where it is. Yeah. It's back at my shop. I hid it. Cleverly so. We should go get it. Then. What? Where did you hide it? Well, beneath the floorboards, of course. Hmm. So not in the wall. Not in the wall, nor near the cubby. So what happened to be in the wall? What do you mean? Well, I happened to find something when we looked in your shop. It was, your, it was a ledger, wasn't it? Mm. My personal ledgers? Did you, do you still have it? Yeah, I do. Please! He, ex he extends his hand out. She digs through her pack and hands it back to him. 
Thank you. I, my entire life's fortune is in here. All of my dealings with business here to the west and the east. Thank you. Sincerely. Now you understand that twice, twice I have done you a favor. I would like to make sure that you understand that. And that going forward from this point, since I do not know you from anyone else, that you will work with us, yes? My life is yours. I owe you a, a life debt, he says. Now that I am born from noble stock, I'm I can aware. trace my family back to the Forbidden Kingdom, to the first shore. My word is my bond, he says, and places his hand upon his chest. Your sister is the one that sent us. Josephine. Yes. I love her dearly. I am thankful I'll be able to see her again. We are not going back the way she sent us. <laughs> no. <laughs> my sister, he says, kind of straightening his neck, is a, a lore knight through and through. No offense intended, of course. You should. Master Yuji. Do I have the right of it? <laughs> you should. Yes, he, none extends taken. His, he extends his hand to shake yours. Shake his hand. I am Edward Booker. I know we have not been formally introduced, but I owe you my life, all of you. I'm surprised we walked away with it. <laughs> whatever is in my power to give you, to help you in whatever you are here for, I am your loyal servant. So what do you, lowers his head. What do you know of the esoteric of Durandal? I know it is a banned book alongside the Corpus and the Libra Umbra. It is on a book of a, a list of banned books uh, by the Holy Father. Did you read it? Goodness no. How the things that are in that book are not meant for people such as I. You know that the book was all but lost so to speak, at least it's what is it's inside of it has been catalogued carefully by an author unknown to I. There is only one copy that I know of, but it is not a book that was printed over and over. It is clearly some sort of clever journal, if you will. How did you come about it? You know how these things do. Many books pass in my shop. Master Sparrow uh, and Master Hexenstern and I have worked together for some number of years. We are here on the Axwater. Things pass to Old Lork up the north in Cauldron Lake. Things go further south in Rowaline. Sometimes books leave Rowaline and well, they come to me. I I suppose you could say that I am a, um, a trafficker in blasphemous tomes. For antiquarians and those who are interested in the true histories before the bitch queen destroyed the great libraries, he says. You can only imagine here in Kael Tyrion, with the Elornites being here, that, well, my role is uh, one that is particularly unique and needed. Jonas Sparrow steps in. <coughs> Book and I go pretty far back. He and Weez and Hexenstern, we've been working together for a long time, even before Hexenstern was a bell guard before he was, well, when he saw the Baroness's death in the stars, sometime well before then. I suppose we should get to your bookstore, make sure it's still there and has not been found. I shall escort you, Sir Guillaume Genevieve says. It is not safe for you to go into the streets alone. I believe they're all gone. Well, one can never be too wary, he says, as he doffs his armor. I don't, I don't think that we's the only ones in the city. Well, we've been wandering around the... No, no, I understand. But we should we should go as quickly as possible. It would be lovely to have you. There will probably be looters here anytime soon. Right. Oh. I, I was going to say, we did run across a wagon where someone was ripping teeth out. May I inquire, you know. Miss... Hey, Harper Claviger, Jonas says, you happen to know the condition of my boat? Well, it's, uh, we were able to pull it out of port, and, uh, we, uh, threw anchor on the other side of the river, so hopefully it, in, in a cove, so hopefully it should be unmolested, because, well, Matthew's there, too. Uh, that's fantastic to hear. So, well, well, I mean, but, uh, 
I was the actual pilot of the boat, but... You know. Right, right. I mean, I didn't say I did it. I just said that's what happened to it. But okay. But all right. <laughs> he we, we, moved your boat. Actually Father days. Bartlesby says, if you need shelter or food or some place to stay in Almeron's Gates, you will welcome back here at the Archivist Library. I imagine it's only a matter of time until those who fled Almeron's Gates will return to the district. Well... I mean, the question I had for uh, you, Mr. Sparrow, yes, was um, there was another passenger along upon your your, your slope, a uh, rather tall figure of a man. Yes. What can you tell me about that person? I'm afraid I can't tell you much. He was. They were. She was. They were. Very strange. A handsome sum of money was sent to me anonymously to ferry them across the river. Walked and strode as tall as a tree almost, eight foot high at the nose, or at least what you could see of it beneath the mask. Strode strangely, didn't say a word the entire trip. Came from somewhere outside of Durandal. So large enough money, enough money that you didn't even ask questions. All right, I can understand that. He took the Bastards River and joined the Axwater and went from the north through Old Lork and came down here to Kale Tyrion some number of days ago. Seems damn near unsettling after everything what, what you've been through. What made you do it? What do you mean? I mean, you know. Piece of smoke, lad. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Let's let's not. The man has a boss. We all do. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. We all follow orders. Right. Well, <coughs> I had no boss, but the purse was large enough, and I didn't ask any questions, and yeah. the passenger didn't say anything back, so I didn't press on the matter. I mean, no. Master Eugene was there too. <coughs> I'm somebody I wish to converse with. So I am rather talkative myself. This that person was strange. That makes you Why do you inquire? Well, we're we're trying to find that out because uh, that's the one that uh, assassinated. Uh, uh, what? Barrister Rosalia. Barrister Rosalia Mansfield. Father Bartlesby perks up a brow at this point, and Sir Guillaume kind of turns toward the conversation. You know the, the person who murdered the Mistress Mansfield, the the barrister? Yes. Yep, was that creature. Almost killed me too. Chased him and down. He looks to Sparrow. So Guillaume, Father Bartlesby pleads, this is not our business. We should not tend to see in this. It makes you feel any better, Jonah. The person's dead. We should leave. Jonas says, kind of beneath his breath. Father Bottlesby says, this is none of our business, so he all let it, let, it, let it lie. Return as you need to, Father Bottlesby, Bottlesby says as he ushers you out. All right. Jonas Sparrow and Edward Booker are very quick to leave the archivists, um, the archivist library at this point. Hmm. Who's this Guillaume fellow? I'll step to the side, and as they, as Booker and him leave, I'll make sure we get some distance. Who is this young fellow? Speaking of Jonah, J- Jonah and Booker, since yeah. they 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 booked it. Jonah says, "I did it for you, man." I think Master Clavager would know a little bit more about that. About what? I'm sorry. No, I wanted to know if there's a coaching station nearby that might have that coach in there. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. You'll have to walk across the desert, but you'll walk unmolested. Yeah, it's fine. You're walking among the remnants of the Inquisition. So we're headed back to the bookshop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On our way, I'm going to pull Terwin aside, talk to him for a moment. But hold on. Before you do that, I okay. need to answer the bear. <coughs> so Guillaume was the Marquis' son, Marquis of Durendal. The young, he's just knighted no more than he was still a pup. Probably a squirt in the well, belly still. He's all of 15 winters of age, 16 at best. That's the Marquis' son. He nods. 
That's the Baroness's nephew. Well, that is... So how does so he would know Rosalia, since Rosalia was probably raised with him. Probably true. We need to be uh, remembering who we are. I'll look at Warren at first. Let's not bring up things that happened in the deeps. Let's we got to keep our words wrapped up. That could have gone bad. My shop is not far now. Forgive me, I must make water. He turns away, leaving Terwin and Warren to speak briefly. I'll give it an eye on him. <laughs> Terwin, Terwin. If we get a hold of that book, you can't let her see it. You can't let her get my lay eyes on it. If she wants something with it, I don't know quite what it is, but if she lays eyes on it, I shudder to think what could happen. Now, there's some sort of mystery locked up in there could be a way to get her out of me. I just need someone I can trust to look the book over and, and suss that out. If there is... They're not in this conversation. It's the two of them in private. If there is, then I need to get her out of my head because she's going to be the death of me. Right. There we go! <clears throat> but just, oh my goodness, they what did they do to my shop? He says as he walks inside. Oh, look at this place. It's in... Shambles! A lot more, but a lot worse. Yes. At least it's not lucky. on fire. All right, lady and gents. We'll paint to cover that up. Lady well, Marius. I oh. believe that there could be looters at any moment, and so could I have you and you? Yes. Danica and the woman. Can I have you keep watch outside? Yeah, boss. Back, front. I want. I, I would love it if you could keep watch out back. And could you help keep watch in front with Warren? Sure. I'll step to the back. So, yeah, Warren, if, if I could have the two of you follow me. We need some. We need some My uh, information gatherers. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm happy to help. I'm uh, curious about this book. And so I'm going to wait until it's the four of us. Who is the four of us? Well, um, the uh, Booker. Mm -hmm. um, Eugene. Eugene and uh, um, Elisa. Uh, Elisa and myself. Okay. Okay, so this is the four of you at this point. All right. Booker? Yes. I understand we're here to get the esoteric at the rental. I know that he's supposed to take it back to uh, 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 Exxon's den. No, that is not true. In fact, Master Eugene, according to Jonah, was not made apprised of this. It was a personal request from Master Hexenstern Stern to Jonah. It's the first time I've ever heard of it. Wasn't it just said down below that Did we wait? Did we not just have, like hear that conversation? That no, was Jonah. Needed Jonah was going to take it back. Jonah was yeah. Idea. Just Jonah, not not Eugene. That's right. Eugene yeah. was Eugene sent to help you. Oh, yeah. okay. He was sent by Hexenstern to okay. help you, and he issued. Remember, he issued that long apology letter along with a nice, mighty satchel of gold. By the way, thirty-five gold crowns. Nice. Right. That's the most money I've ever had in any of these campaigns. Okay, okay. Now that yeah. I'm, I got a newly word now. Foot to mouth. Right. Three, one, eight. Mistress, my, sorry, Lady Maria, should I fetch the book? Yeah, this in here. Um, I'm going to need one of the three of us to carry that book. And we need to make sure that Warren doesn't know who's carrying it. Yes. Well, not to play the role, but Warren and I have nothing in common. We hardly know each other. Out of anyone he's likely to casually talk to, me one of you two. Well, I'm not worried about him figuring out if I happen to have it. Well, he'll avoid me the most, is what I'm saying. That's not necessarily true of the entity. <laughs> and you know why I'm here. I've been ordered by Master Hexenstein to assist you in all ways. 
Right, so you know what's going on before, and you heard what he was saying to uh, Evangeline? Evangeline? Yes. Yes. As I, mean, I have some questions on that, but I feel uh, that's for another time. That's true. We have a ship at some point it to jump on to. So, you need to know that at some point in time, there may be like, like snuffing a, a candle out and then re, relighting the other end. It'd be Warren's body, but it won't be Warren. Right, well. And so you'll be you'll be dealing with someone who's conniving, who's smarter than all of us here. Maybe not you. But you need to be on guard. <laughs> well, Lisa looks offended slightly. <laughs> Tewin. <coughs> We've known each other a very short time, but I can assure you I've spent my life dedicating yeah. to reading knowledge and keeping others from getting it. Out of everyone night. here, <laughs> I think I'm the most appropriate to keep Warren, question mark, from getting the information. <laughs> but you being the most obvious may not be the best. Yeah. I'm not necessarily saying I. I'm making a case for me to be the one to carry it. Well, I mean, yes. between between us, uh, between us girls, I trust you the most. <laughs> Just between us girls. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Edward Bunker says, the book. Who should I give it to? Do you happen to have another book that might look similar to it? Sure. I mean, I could draw any book off the wall and say, hey, this is Derek Hunter Rindle. <laughs> you know. A decoy may not be the worst idea. The decoy, then, he pulls a book off the shelf. Thank Here's you. the Esoterica Durindle, and he does the eyebrow thing, which implies. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take it and I'll put it in my... To you. And, and as for the real book, he walks over to the counter, and then the shelf opens beneath. Secret science, can I learn that pattern? <laughs> <laughs> This is how to use it. Know that I have not opened. I have not read. <laughs> I have not read into this book. <laughs> it's the sixth grade cover. However, <laughs> I shall tell you that the book has remained has remained bookmarked, and I assume that was of some importance to its unknown author. To whom should I give it? All right, last thing. <laughs> Well, come on now. Somebody has to have the book. You have the dummy. Warren pleaded with me to use it to cast out his guest. <clears throat> so, if any of you thinking that you can learn how to cast out his guest, I, I know I'm not the one to do it. I can read it and dissect. Alexi has taught me. I, I tell you what, you keep the decoy, she and I can figure out how to assist Warren. We could pass between, it doesn't have to stay with one of us at all times. Alright, let's get a third book and we all carry books. <laughs> <laughs> just, just run out of words! We're just not reading the shadow! He's like shuffling around. Yeah, and here's the second book, <laughs> and I shall give it to whom? I shall take it. Then the fake book is yours, the fake book number one, number two, and as I said, I am not Move the book oh, box. I meant I want the regular book. <laughs> <laughs> too late. Too late. Dang. Some time before you open. Some time will pass, and you <laughs> five. So, great science. Sons, you five. <laughs> sons, Warren will gather alone at some point, and of course you can't help him but open to the bookmark. Nope. <laughs> Harper wants nothing to do with this, as superstitious <laughs> as he is. Yeah. So no Elisa begins to to read aloud what is bookmarked. Oh, is that one of it? Turn to page twelve in your textbook. The entire book is filled with notes, but the, the bookmark is specifically here. Well, look at all of that. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we are without word at this point. Yes. It is the third age of mankind, but the second age of mysteries was a tumultuous time in the history of Mahal. 
Kingdoms rose and fell at the drop of a penny. The oldish people had only recently arrived from the first shore and settled into a region called Aquitaine by the Donish. The oldish consisted of three families, the Eridane and Aglador, the Gentish and Galeon, and the Rovanians and the Girdle. Church of the Covenant and the worship of the gods was still in its infancy as Eridane priests had only recently begun to proselytize the Dunish tribes of Aquitaine. You should probably slow down a little bit. Sorry. It's okay. One of the lesser known incidents from this early second age scrubbed from the Holy Librum during the Great Purge by Queen Lysandra Priam, the bitch queen, that's always clever, is the story of one of the Night Father's servants who broke her way into the material realm of Mahal. Records of this event have been eradicated with such fervor that only a few diary entries and an elusive pieces of art remain. From these scarce and obscure sources, I have been able to deduce the following. Almerin the Secret of States in his seminal work, Liber Umbrum, that angels who serve the night further are born as an embodiment of a particular emotion. One such was a powerful angel, but whose name was lost to time. Like all of the Night Father's servants, she was a unique expression of the Night Father's emotion at the time of her creation. In her case, the emotion was something quite foreign and loathsome to the Night Father, something too mortal. The emotion of unrequited love. Despite all of her allure and influence, the angel had never been able to entice the Night Father to reciprocate her adoration. Instead, she was seen as an anthema to the Night Father. A reflection of his denial of all things unworthy of love. Yet she desired nothing more than to prove herself worthy through utter devotion, but twisted to her own worldview. The Night Father has a grand plan to spread his influence upon Mahal, but not until the world had grown from its dark ages. In the Well of Souls, the angel grew to be influential, attracting other angels, the Night Father, who suffered from his unreturned love. None upon Mahal knew her name, but she intended to ensure that both the Night Father and the people of the Second Age would never forget it. To earn his love, she intended to gift the Night Father with the most chaste and wholesome of all women from Mahal. Against his wishes, she descended upon Mahal and brought with her Siabra, a bastard-born child of the Night Father, who wore masks to hide the anguish and tears. The angel was doubtlessly beaten back to the Well of Souls, and her Siabra escaped to the Four Winds, but more on that later. Oh, oh, yes, good. Disappointed and disgusted that she would seek to infiltrate Mahal so early in its infancy, the Night Father plucked the angel from the Well of Souls and banished her beyond the stars to the ethereal veil. She was imprisoned by powerful hexagramic equations of dark magic and turned into Numina, an ancient old world that roughly translates to the Watcher Beyond the Stars. Today, when Leviathan's Eye, the Autumn Star, burns baefully towards the world from the first night of Penumbra, Autumn, till di disappearing on the last night of Umbra, Spring, the Watcher Beyond the Stars is allowed a brief glimpse of Durindal. The Lavinci chapter house of Durindal displays a half-burned painting said to have survived a terrible fire. It pictures a woman with flowing mane of black hair and burning blue eyes, defeating an angel with a pillar of flame. Even though the full story was lost during the Great Purge of the Second Age by Lysandra, the Bitch Queen, the painting reveals the truth. The angel failed in her efforts and was driven back to the Well Souls by none other than Bessiah, one of the three Magi, founder in the Church of the Covenant and sainted at Bessiah Square in Durindal. <laughs> You recall seeing this painting when you were in the halls of the Lavinci Chapter House, but as you were drawn into trying to find, or you're in the models and the rooms and such, the, the, the learning rooms, that you just passed by and didn't think twice. But it instantly clicks for those who were in the Lavinci Chapter House. You recall seeing that painting. Hmm. You also began your journey in Bessiah Square, and you remember what they spoke about, that is reputedly where Bessiah had chased away some devilish spirit with a torch. Or so goes the story. That was it was on Besides Day, wasn't it, when we started this whole thing? It was on Penumbra. It was on Penumbra, that's what it was, sorry. Hmm. Some of these mysteries do not immediately make any sense to you, Eugene. Many of them have never been revealed to you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the
these are what are oftentimes referred to by the Elorite logicians as the higher mysteries. That is forbidden from archivists and others. So right now it's the the four of us because you didn't want anything to do. Yeah, I was like, La. <laughs> I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> uh -huh. it, okay. Hmm. That's a lot to take in. I think we can we can mull it over. Yes. We're I'm not even sure I understand all of it. Hmm. Definitely bears pondering over. Mm -hmm. But the bigger question is what now? What should be on the stars? Well, we need to return with. I need to put the esoteric and the in me pack. It's true. You know that the notes that you found that were burned in the fireplace were by. By, by Rosalia Mansfield seemed to have other things that were happening as well. If you recall, you had several leads, uh, uh, Elisa. You followed the first lead, which was the Esoterica de Rendel. The second lead was the town. Yeah. Stone. 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 I was going to say stone, and I was like, yeah. I know no, I'm saying it. <coughs> town. Stone and stone. Emil Frosch. Yeah, that's Which it. Which one was Emil Frosch? The bootlegger that works at, is an apothecary who used to work for Zox. And then Bruno Lehman, who... We believe is the one that paid. Paid from the master, paid for the Seabrin to go after her. Alright, so... Let's put the book away and then we'll take a step outside. Yeah. Let's discuss what we need to do. Are you gather the others? Yeah. At this point, yeah. you all step outside on the winter night. All right. So we've got a number of leads that we need to follow. It is all of you at this point. And uh, what I'm trying to figure out is which one is the closest geographically. So now we're wandering all around the, the country and then doubling back. Stow. Stone's just out of, outside of here. All right. Just down the river. Okay. And can we get, oh, <laughs> you answered my next question. Can we get there via the river? But it's down the river. Good. Yes. yes. All right. You know Stowe is north of here. If you were to go north on the Axwater, you'd arrive in Stowe. And should you go beyond Stowe, you'd eventually arrive to Old Lord Von Cauldron Lake. In fact, <coughs> That's the you look at the map. to go anyway, right? Is the way you must return to Durendal, yeah. unless you wish to go back through the stead wall. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, no, I think that was, once was enough. <laughs> we'll assume that Booker and J Jonah are not here for this conversation at this point. All right. So, I mean, we can we can see if Jonah will take us. Well, what about the Madeline? Madeline ain't ours. Hasn't been ours since it was turned over to the it ain't Baron. Barons either. Has it been a week? It's not it been. has. Well, then we need to go talk to the Baron. Um, that's a good point. We need to see to the cessation. As per orders from Steed Till, so we need to see if there's anything else that we can do to see to it. So if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Do we take the Madeline back? Do we know that from Hexenstone? You know Man, anything about what we're talking about? What I? I don't think no. So. No. As far as I can see. No. As far as I can see, the Madeline's a tool. It ain't ours. If we don't succeed, we'll leave it here. I mean, it was meant to be a gift. We can Shit. have Jonah take us back. I mean, that works around the... the we can just leave the Madeline as is. Is Jonah fit for travel at this point? I'm sure with Banneker assisting him. Yeah. Man's a drunk, but he can make his way around. He's a good smuggler. I don't know necessarily that I'm that worried about his inebriation level more his mind. Uh, he seems even more broken than last time we saw him. Mind can take quite a bit. So did a quick a quick reminder. 
uh, about the badly burned notes in the fireplace. There was one that mentioned the Esoterica de Rindle and the mention of the name Edward Booker. So you've ticked off in that box, so to speak. Yeah. Um, there was a second paper that mentioned someone named Emil Frosch, uh, a midfolk in Stowe, who was supposed to send something of significance to Durendal. The What that was, you're not sure, because it was burned up. The pages were burned up. Mm -hmm. uh, the third was smaller, much, much smaller, and appears to be... Who saw the note passed to Rosalia during the party? I believe it was Harper. Was it me? I yeah, think so. It was. Yeah, you Harper. Saw yeah, you saw you saw the note passed to her, and what you deduced is that it must have been the note. That, there's another third note that was burned in the fireplace, and it simply shows the signature of Templeton Murdoch. Oh yeah, I do have Templeton Murdoch right here. So we need to talk to him, right? Where, where is Templeton Murdoch? You hear the name Templeton Murdoch. <coughs> at this point, um, Eugene, and you know exactly who he is. What do I know about the guy? He is an Eloranite um, <laughs> that <laughs> is closely, that he and Hexenstern have a lot of history. And a good history, or like, they're constantly at odds and Mr. Hexenstern would like to see this guy at the bottom of the lake? Well, Mr. Hexenstern would never wish anyone dead because he is not a killer. But, <laughs> but um, he and Templeton have enjoyed lively debate over all evenings of cognac and mm -hmm. cigars. Intellectual rivalry. An intellectual rivalry. Yeah. Master Templeton's a, a close, <laughs> uh, close friend of my master Hexenstein. I've seen them debate and chat amongst themselves quite often, actually. Cigars, cognac, big roaring fires, late nights. Would he be here? Would I know his whereabouts? Where he might be? Uh, you know he travels a lot. Um, you know that um, he has been as far as a city called Cahabro. Uh, and that he finds himself uh, around all of Aglador and the Rovain Girdle. His current whereabouts is unknown, but Hexenstern would doubtlessly know. Uh, and I, would I know where Hexenstern would reside right now? Hexenstern back in Durindle. Yeah. Uh, he's a traveling man. He's been as far as Cahabro, all over the Rovain Girdle, all over Aglador. He could be anywhere right now. The best bet to find him would be to... Sp I could speak with Master Hexenstern if I see him. Perhaps right. learn his whereabouts. So that continues to... Take us back to Durandal. Yeah, but it, uh, it means that we should stop by Stowe on the way. Uh, yeah. you know, Stowe away. Right? So, the, see if the per pretend... See if the Lord wants to become a pretend baron. Right, we need to stop by... Kaltirian, see if we can. Yeah, we need to head back on over. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's what we're talking best for people who are better at talking. And uh, so. Not you and me. Well, actually. You did fairly well there. Yeah, you can you can talk to. Him. Maybe not. No, I would not want to talk to him. Sex nude parties. Well, that was him. Oh, parties. It was. <laughs> Forgot about that one. All right, all right. So we made a mistake, a really funny one, but it's. Uh, Come on, we've all laughed about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I ain't, what, I ain't built what for you them said in the face, you know oh, that. Oh. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> we need we need to we need to get to we need to get to the barge. We need to see. Well, we need to see if Jonah will <coughs> take us, and then we need to see about getting to. Barge. Jonah's going back this that way. This first. Right? I'm going to read the back, too. Right. And you, you, we have procured the item that he needs to get back to Hexenstone, right. so... Right. Um, you know, another thing I'd like to do is I'd like to... Templeton. To maybe see if there's anything that can help us get there. Maybe a carriage. Maybe if there's anything left on the ground. What? You well, know, when I see if, if 
Jonas headed back to Hexenstern. We could hitch a ride with him. Right? I should. Right. Stop it still on the way. And go on right down to I mean, Rindle. I should warn you, though. Timothy <clears throat> Murdoch is no man to be trifled with. He is a true sorcerer. He's got powers far greater than almost any man I've ever seen. Making sure this is not a dialogue thing. Um, so he, wait, wait, wait. he uses guns, or he can do what the Inquisitor did. Yep. Does he use guns? Because he's a wizard. He That's with wizard. wands. That's wizard. Right. Oh, me. I, I don't. It, it's a person yeah, with guns. Yeah. Uh, but, and um, I can't. Are you Eridane? Are you from down there? Like the right. like these gentlemen. Down there. Over there. Rovania. Then what? No, no, you're you're Aradine. Aradine. You're no, I'm Oh, yeah, so you mean he works rituals and the mystic arts. You don't mean that he shoots guns. No, I mean that he's ritual with the mystic arts. Oh. Candles flicker when he walks in the room. The birds go quiet. Oh, so he's a warlock. Yes. Right. I've seen the <laughs> I've seen weather change in his mere presence and when he has a foul temper. The man commands powers. Powers. Hmm. I see. Um, Keep running into yeah. these these beings that can control f- powers. Yeah, I mean, it's all fun and games when we were talking about wizards and wands and all. I know that that's not actual magic, but. Rovanian thing. Don't worry about it. I'll Match. explain it later. But so- the sorcery and uh, oh, hold now, hold it, now. No, 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 no. Wait, just let me finish. All right, what you finish your words. It, it's it's a bit much. We've seen so much over the past what year? Couple months. Six months. Yes. Oh, well, you doubt he has abilities? No. <laughs> no. no, no. It's precisely the opposite, <laughs> and that's only because of the very small portion of my life that I believe it. I think after the last six months, we would believe a lot more than you would you would think. I've seen stuff that would stop your heart, but it's so, nothing like that. So, e- e- Eddie's coming along with us, right? From now on. <coughs> well, we can't let him go Eugene, now. Eugene, Eugene, that's on. right. You believe in ritual and the higher mysteries bullshit... But you don't believe in shadow monsters? I'm not saying that the shadow <laughs> monsters don't exist. What I'm saying is, is it may not be these shadowy creatures. A man in a cloak. Three midgets in a cloak. It could be anything. <laughs> it weren't. I don't think I can take you seriously. I'm just saying, without having the ability to see them, I've seen what he can oh, do. All right, well, uh... I've never seen your shadow creatures. All right. Well, I've never seen a shadow creature before. See? But... My damn hair. This beautiful hair from the gods. <laughs> but you see them streaks? I've seen shadow monsters. She's seen shadow monsters. Yeah, and I, I don't I've think... I've seen them. I don't think that putting oil, oil in it... Hey, 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 hey. Leave, leave, leave the hair alone. The gods will bring. I'm blessed. Beautiful man. Listen, we got things to do. <laughs> <laughs> You could, you could always use. Let's a talk bit, about hair care later. <laughs> you could always use a bit of Dandy Danforth. Well, you know that's my product. You don't have to rub it in. No, so you, you already do that. <laughs> so let's just move on. Yeah. Stop so talking about my hair. Much as your beauty regiments are oh, no, completely I'm, entertaining me, maybe we could move on. I admit it. I'm jealous. <laughs> I, I know you all are jealous. Oh, I am. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> now moving on. Alright, so uh, I guess uh, playing above board would be to uh, try dandelion. Um, go down to the docks and uh, go to the Madeline first yeah. or go to the Last Wish. Um, oh, yeah, something I didn't say out loud. I wanted to, I wanted to see if they left anything behind at the docks um, because they were stationed there. Um, and I just want to see if they did leave anything behind at all. So we're, uh, 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 I want to stop by there for a hunting boat. <laughs> so you're going to go back to the docks where you were, that you fled from? 
Yeah. Okay. Well, it appears that the uh, <laughs> that the uh, Inquisition has certainly passed through here, for they have the bodies are gone. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they have scraped up their own. Um, those that were gutted and left into the the bay are gone. Not surprisingly, there's people begin to filter around the dockyards as well, trying to make sense of what happened. You can see there's this massive blast in the nearby stone where it's been pockmarked where they're firing at Harper, but also the nearby uh, the river wall was blasted to pieces and water's kind of poured across one of the docks. Uh, the place is in disrepair, but it appears that uh, whatever is here has ever been washed away uh, in the axe water or the Inquisition had passed through here. Yeah. So, so nothing left behind. Like we no. can't get a puckle gun for the ship or anything Darn. like that. Nah, okay. Afraid not. <laughs> I cry over the burning wreckage of the the carriage. Yeah, it's it's still smoldering. <laughs> well, not small. It's still smoldering, but barrenness. No. Yeah. No. I cry about it because what my happened to is in there. where's my ship? Is it? Or sorry, where's my ship? Is it a? It's, it's, it's yeah, it's, we it's gotta take a ways on the cove, but uh, I just wanted to see, you know, maybe if they left anything behind that yeah. uh, we could use. You mentioned you digging across to get to it. You mentioned another boat. Yeah, Joe well, says. Oh. They, they was here. <coughs> oh, oh, yes, that's up in Kelterian. We're talking about the Madeline. Yeah. It's a boat. Joe says, what? The Madeline? The flying contraption that they had us bring here. He shakes his head. I'm not sure what you're talking They're about. They're working on making it water-worthy now. Uh, we'll show you when we get there. But uh, we can take a dinghy to the boat and then actually dock it up here. Or take it back up to... I think we should dock in the lower city. Yeah, dock in the dock in the lower city, maybe. Mm -hmm. Might be easier. Booker, was there anything else you wanted to grab? Or I'm assuming you grabbed everything when we were at your shop that you wanted and needed? I've got everything that I need on me. Right. I shall be prepared to travel if that's what you wish to do. You're leaving Kael Tyrion, I trust. Well, I was born to be a traveling man. Well, that's fine and all, <laughs> Master Clavager, but beyond the puns, what is it we intend to do? That's what we're still determining. I believe we're to the lower city. So first to the last wish, then? Yes. I believe, wasn't it to Stow? Along the way to Durindal? Well, that's no. when we make our return, but we still have business in the city. Yes. We got one more day in the city at least. What business have we yet? We need we to talk to the would be baron. Yes. Yes. Of the lords and Yeah, the whole reason we came here in the first place was to get something signed for the Baroness. Which ah. is which is something accents down at us do. Be happy to help. Yeah. Alright, we'll tag along. We've been rowing the boat across the axe water. The water is cold and the air is too. It's very cold out. You make it through this uh, low kind of winter fog as the dinghies kind of emerge and you can see the last wish is moored up near the shore of the axe water near a copse of trees that are bare of all leaves that the trees rattle with the wind clattering. You board the last wish, bringing the dinghies back up as well. All right. <clears throat> Well, can you get us to Lower City, Jonah? Ah. Of course, I can take you there. Let's let's get a move on. Get that mast there. I'll take the captain's wheel. All right. Move that pin. Swing that rope around. All right, let's go. I'll help him do everything. Yep. I try, but I'm really bad at it. I'll tell him just to go below. You you're on, you're on the boat. We all just on helping. <laughs> well, I, Eugene will help. That's right. Not Eddie. Not Edward. Eugene. I will get it. Elisa's you gonna go back over. through the hand movements, like while we're sailing, and try to. Are you throwing gang signs? <laughs> oh yes. So that'd be wonderful. Go ahead and make an incantation test. This test will be easy for you to see your signs. I'm gonna flip to fail. Let's do this. Yeah. 46, is it easy? Mm -hmm. 66. <laughs> I think that's a f odd 5, but let me... It was really Odd bad. 8. So 80. Flip <sighs> to fail. I know. I'll try again. Reroll. Screw it. Reroll. Okay. Let's try it. 
46 or 64. And you had a 66 percent. I needed a 66. So. Well, without a doubt, it is some motion or movement uh, that clearly would be incantation related. Um, if you wish, you may buy the skill <laughs> incantation for double the cost, of course, right. at this point. At this point right now? Any point you want. Any point. Yeah, okay. it's now open. That skill is now open to you. Okay. <clears throat> the you you pass along this this very fast moving sloop down the down the axe water on the last wish, and it comes into the lower city as you pass beneath the tall soaring bluffs where the upper city and the massive bridge is, and you can see that there's all manner of business happening around the dockyards as a couple of ships are gone. Um, you talk to the dock master, and he says something about that. The Inquisitor came through and bought a boat, literally bought a boat, and she went south. And the entire her entire group of people joined her, and they're gone. Um, and you come toward where the Madeline is docked, and what you can see. <laughs> There's this low humming sound. I guess this is probably the better sound. Wonder what Sammy's been up to. Mm. As you approach, you see this massive galleon that now has sails. And it appears the entire hull has been painted white. Uh, remember, you paid the caulkers. Yep. Uh, and they have done their work. To the, and you can see the entire ship, the top of it is belching smoke. And you can see this huge, this huge sail still being strung up by this gangly looking woman and this fellow who looks very, very simple. Hey! No, put the rope down there, wrong, you damn idiot! No, no, over there, over there! As these two were kind of finagling with the boat. The top of the boat, you can see these large iron smokestacks that are belching forth black smoke at this point. This is new. Oh, that ain't right. Oh, hey, Agnes, I thought I'd never see you again. <laughs> a black goat with a single horn curving forward. The galleon easily dwarfs the last wish. The sloop, for Jonah's sloop, is dwarfed by this massive ocean-going galleon. A single masted galleon. You walk up, the, you disembark and walk up the gang planks, and you see this fellow who's kind of a square jaw, and he's got uh, his hair is uh, balding, and he's standing right near this woman who looks a bit, she looks a bit thick in the head, and a bit thick in the chest, and and shanks. Oh, you blockhead! You're back already. He slaps, he slaps Warren on the shoulder. <laughs> Ship's looking good. Yeah, I'm yeah, back. Yeah, looking good. Thanks She's take, almost ship shape. Thanks for taking care of Agnes for me while I was gone. All right, old Johnny Vander, you know him. He got some wild hair up his ass about two nights ago, and he said, uh, "Bring up that old that old cast iron down in the in the in the down in the the, the, the hold." So we brought it up. This is what he did. Hmm. Now look at it. The whole damn thing's a shambling. Smells like. Damnation, he says. You can smell. It smells like. Whew. It smells like sulfur, as the black smoke is still choking everywhere. And you've never seen anything like this before. The whole ship is literally vibrating. So does it move? Well. What does it move? Well. It's moving right now. I right. told you I got that. I figured it out. Well, I know you figured it out, but just, can you control it? You couldn't control it. Mm, it's practically dancing. Well, we can't go up river unless we. We ain't got winds. I don't think we're gonna have winds the next couple days, but we can give it the old uh, we can give it the old tradesman try. Well, you have something new, and I have something new. As I, this is Matthew. As I was, you know, would have That's the biggest damn horse I ever seen. Yep. Joe the Sparrow. Sammy says, <laughs> "Well, I think we know each other." They make some small talk and introduce themselves as the person clearly who is. Who is captaining the ship as Sammy Newhouse, as he introduces himself as, and the woman that's with him, as they simply call Rung. 
Where's How's it going, Veron? Where's, where's Captain? Uh, Wolfgang? Yeah. Oh, he's staying here with his brother. I got unfinished business. His brother? Mm. Right. The Can it just the... be us? No. Right. Tell me. Or maybe we do this on the river. Tell me all about what happened to the Barons. Sammy says as he... Race sail, woman! Oh, she. Oh, no, oh, no, oh. <laughs> we we got business to attend to here in town. One more day. Just one more day. One more day. That's right. We need we need we just need a day. And we got them soldiers going back with us too. We got soldiers going back. What do you mean? Oh, the guards, right? Uh, that that were the the, vi- the other group that came. Okay, so there was. You there mean, was oh, you mean the brigandine? Right, the brigandine. We're taking them back, right? Or they already leave? They haven't left, right? They went south with some woman. Oh shit! Oh. Gave them some big old sum of coin and. Uh oh. They went down river. Well, all right. Never mind then. All of them. Well, I didn't make counts of every man and woman among them, but. I can assure you a whole bunch of people's swinging in uh, black brigandine and swords with their waist boarded that ship that that uh, holy woman was talking. Uh-oh. Well. well. Oh, well. Well, uh... <laughs> I mean, nothing we can do about that. That ship has literally sailed. Um, as long as the word gets there first. Well, it ain't gonna get there first by river. All right, well, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... All right, here we go. Here we go. Come on, come on. The whole ship comes to a slow shudder and a single gout of smoke and the Madeline, as they have dubbed it, named after the Baroness, comes to a quiet murmuring. All right. You need a day. You get a day. Get wherever you need to go. Exactly where we're going anyway. Well, Stowe. We'll eventually be going north. So Going back down. Yes. Who would like? All right. But uh, I know the way. It's that way. Yeah. Well, that way up river. You just follow the river. You go against the current. You can't. You can't get lost in the river, unless you're a dummy and get a small boat and get lost in the swamps around Calder Lake. But we're going to Stowe. That's an easy find. Yeah. That's just north where the where the Calder Lake spills into the Axe Water. Exactly where we're going. A couple, two, three, five days? I don't know, at best. Right. Well, it does seem to me that uh, we may not necessarily need Jonah with us at this point. I mean, Jonah's his own man. He's got his own boat. He can do what he wants. Right. I, I'm man. stating he doesn't necessarily need to help us travel. Mm-hmm. Well, we should probably have Booker with us. Well, let's talk to a couple people first yeah. and then decide. Right, so there's a couple things we need to do. We need to make sure that we speak with the Baron, or at least one of Baron's peoples. The Baron. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we need to unload some of the stuff. All these guns. We need to talk to Josephine at some point. Too. Well, we know a man that needs guns, or at least maybe. Um, and then unload this brigandine unless one of you wants to have it taken in. Let so, up. as opposed to doing yeah. this all in character, yeah, here's what I suggest. Right. Anything you're going to sell, we're going to sell outside of the game. Right. right. Any convert, let's, but let's key on the key. Let's, let's right. key in on who you need to talk to before you leave. Right, which is the Baron. And Primarily. Josephine. At some point. Right. Baron. So is Josephine critical to the story? Nope. Okay. Then let's send her a letter and be like, your brother's not dead. Right. Why? I think that I think that her brother could probably handle that. That's what I'm right. saying. He can. Okay. While we go, like he can go camera. see his sister and say. That's yeah, right. Bye bye. Yeah. Off camera, he will be able to tell. You know those it. people you sent to save me? Well, they saved me, and now I owe them my life. Exactly. Yeah. Is there anything else you feel is necessary beyond speaking to the Baron while you're here? Beyond? I mean, I was just going to check the the pub to see if there was any Burgundian soldiers left. No, they're gone. Okay. They literally all left. Okay. Yeah. They were gone. So basically, she yeah. burned the city and robbed the coffers. Yep. Bought herself an army and went south. Uh, aren't we supposed to oh, yeah. take Domino with us? Yes. Oh, yes. Domino's going to go with us, too. And uh-huh. I, I would like to retrieve Domino first before we go to the Barons. Why? 
case things go negatively with the parent. Yeah. I mean, just so you want to? So just to clarify, you're going to bring Domina. We need to do that on camera. Yeah. You're going to go speak to the Baron. We can do that on camera. Okay. Off yeah. camera, Elisa is going to um, try to go have dinner with Jenny before they leave town. Oh yeah. yes. <laughs> Jenny's got uh, Jenny's got his eye on Elisa. There you go. Waha, pouring on that. Uh, it's her type. That, uh, <laughs> Robadian <laughs> sugar. Well, he looks like Ben if it's any consolation. <laughs> <laughs> That's awkward. <laughs> so, like around the table, <laughs> Eugene, anything you wish to do while you're here in Calterian before, uh, before they depart? I would do uh, see if I can purchase anything. There's some needed medical supplies. We can do that off camera. Yeah, the off camera. That's okay. my only thing. Banneker? Same thing, Baron. Okay. Yeah, Warren? Baron. I would talk to either Elisa or Eugene about what they know about the book. Okay. Off camera. Mm-hmm. Or later on, I should say. Yes. Not, not, what I'm saying is, in the next 24 hours, anything that is critical that yeah. you need to do before you leave Kel'Tyrion, say it now and okay. forever hold your peace. Got it. Yeah. Baron. Janity, I talk to the Baron. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, nothing critical, really. Okay. Get, uh, get Domina, Shop, and Baron. Cool. And Shop, yeah. So, uh, we will wrap up. Okay. This will be the end of this act. Ooh. Yeah. As I completed this act, and the story will continue on as you make your way to Stowe. We will button up any last conversations with the Baron off camera because it's not important for our viewers to know. It's probably going to be some slight back and forth. That's about it. But other than that, we will call this the end of this, and we will resume next week with the continuation of Queen of Embers. So, what act we are survived. we moving to? Four or five? I don't know. Four. Okay. Yeah, a long act. This was the longest for sure. It was um actually, I think probably actually. The it was uh actually. five <laughs> sessions. Six actually. sessions. Really? Six sessions, yeah. I think the second one or the first one when I first came in was the longest. I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah. yeah. So see you we'll all next week. Recorded. Thanks for watching. If Thanks, you, patrons. If you know, leave a comment. <laughs> if you know, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we only play right. this game. Hey, oh, thanks for your patronage. Nice. We just reached a new goal. Yeah, it's super cool. Right. We'll have an image of all of our characters done by Dan Manditch soon. We'll release two backers oh, yeah. along yeah. with character sheets, which will be cool to play. Yeah. Um, we'll release those as well. Um, and more to come on Patreon. Stay tuned. More cool stuff. Radiator. All kinds of fun stuff coming up for 2020. Thank you all again for... Yeah. Um, helping subsidize our gaming habits yeah. and for watching Queen of Embers. Thank you. Yeah. Lots of stuff. Cool. All right. See you later, guys. Bye. 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 Guys. Oh, <laughs>